Okay. Got it. Well, hello, everybody, again, from Istanbul, Phil Simborg here, very proud and happy to be doing the live streaming of the UBC Contender uh, event. We started with 24 players. We have four more rounds. Uh, out of the 16 qualifier rounds. And we will then have eight left that are selected. And the eight have not been totally decided yet. We've got some exciting matches coming up for you. Uh, after today, there will be a break during the day tomorrow. We're going to have a speed gammon contest where all the contenders who want to play in speed gammon have, can have a chance to see if they can possibly in any way beat me. Because I'm going to play too. Then at nine o'clock Istanbul time tomorrow night will be the first two rounds of the final eight. The final eight will be playing with live boards, with regular clock settings, and uh, I hope they'll play with baffle boxes, but that's not mandatory. And uh, from the final eight, of course, we'll get it down to four. They're going to play four matches against a single player, and it's going to be a seated event. The number one player out of the top uh, qualifying uh, players of the 24 will play the number eight player and number two will play number seven all by PR. Uh, and again, for every time you beat your opponent in PR, and then two more players will be like wild cards that get in that didn't get enough points. However, they have the best PR of anyone other than those six that already got in. So that's uh, how you get to the final eight. It's very, very exciting. Uh, we're getting uh, transcription very, very well done. We're up to 10 of the 12 matches have been totally transcribed and posted on the Facebook page, uh, the UBC uh, Back M and Galaxy Facebook page. And uh, there's another website for that too. I'm, I don't have the URL. But uh, we're in good shape because we have a lot of work being done by Bill Riles and Tara on a super high speed computer to analyze these games and put them in. Uh, if you missed the previous sessions, we have seen amazing play. Lots of people playing at two under three PR, occasionally playing under two PR and uh, very, very exciting matches. Most matches like the last one we saw, Thomas Mayer were, rolled a double six to win a race where he was pretty much dead. I already declared the the, the game for his unlucky opponent. Uh, but now we're going to see two very exciting matches coming up. Uh, it's not a just a coincidence that the next two matches will feature Mochi uh, because we he certainly is somebody to watch. And uh, he's playing two of the other top, top players in the field in the next two matches. First match will be Mochi and Mark Olson, who is uh, doing very well in this tournament. And then the next match, is I think could be the match of the uh, so far uh, as far as their ratings and so on is Mochi and Zednik. Zednik is leading the field with points and his PR is amazing. And so is Mochi's, of course. Then we'll follow up with two more matches after that. Uh, Justin and Ernst, uh, two very good players and also on the cusp, but might be able to get in. And then our last match will be kind of a, just a nothing match between some guy named Michi and another guy named Dirk. So stay tuned for some incredible playing you're about to see. Uh, and of course, we're now we're waiting for uh, Mochi and uh, Mark Olson to get ready. We had a lunch break. I had lunch with Mochi and uh, he looked very nervous. Uh, uh, he, I'm sure he, I think he's scared to death of, uh, oh, not of Mark. Uh, he's scared to death of what I might say about him. 
I, he was worried about me. Uh, he even offered to buy my lunch if I'd shut up. Hold on one second. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm getting a phone call here. I think I had a pocket dial. Look at the chat. Ah. I'm looking at the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat on the stream. The WhatsApp chat. The link. Ah. Okay, we're ready for the match to start. Let me get this going. All right, I've got the table up now and we've got Mochi on top and Mark Olson will be on the bottom. And uh, we're ready to go with a very, very major, important, exciting match between two grandmasters, uh, I think, I don't know what Mochi's called. Is he a super grandmaster? But uh, the ratings are awfully good. We're waiting for Mark to log in and we'll start the match. It's a seven point match with a seven minute in the bank and 12 second delay. And here we go. They're ready. I think Mark's familiar with playing on Galaxy and I know Mochi is too. They're actually playing on Galaxy. Now, this is a much faster way of recording the matches and getting them done and that's why they're not playing on a live board with this many players. It would just be too cumbersome and take too long to get the analysis done. So we're getting really quick analysis, and we'll know by the end of tonight for sure who the final eight are and what the ratings are. That'll all be updated. Uh, and it might be a little bit into the morning before we have it for sure because it has to be at the higher ratings done by better computers. Okay, um, I've got to refresh my browser here. I'm not getting the stream. All right, I need some help from Tara Mendocino if she's watching or if somebody can reach her. A little technical problem up here on watching the, the live stream and I need her help. Let me, I don't want to stop the commentary. I want to watch what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead, even though I can't see the live stream, uh, I'm watching the match itself and we can see that Mochi has a pretty commanding position here. Mark has three checkers back. Mochi's about to make the bar point. Uh, and he's thinking about doubling. I certainly don't blame him. Again, we've talked about this many times. Woolsey's Law, if you were Mark, would you take or pass? If you're not sure, you should double. Mochi uses that strategy himself. Absolutely. He goes much deeper, though. He goes into what are my odds of winning? What are my market losers? What are How many gammons are there? How strong is the turnaround? So he's contemplating and decided it is not a double. I might have doubled because I wasn't sure about the take as much, but obviously Mochi was very sure that he had a take. Okay, Mochi's game has certainly improved by making the bar, but Mark's game also improved by making the four point. I still like Mochi's game, but now I am pretty sure I'm taking. I guess it had to be a take before. Obviously, if Mochi wasn't even doubling, that must have been a take. Okay, 6 1 to play. Two yeah, I can't see that. Thank you, Tara. I don't know what I do without Tara and Bill Riles here. They help me in so many ways. Okay, 3 2. Do you step up here? I think you do step up to the five point and come down. Thank you. I come up, I step up to the five point and come down, I think, but we're about to see what a grandmaster does when we see what Mark does. Uh, it's just too tough to stay back in this position. Hey, what the heck he did? He did my play. Wow, I'm on the 14th floor. He couldn't be couldn't be because he heard me. 
I like the play. You have to challenge him. You can't just sit back there on the 24 and get slaughtered. You'd rather get slaughtered up higher, maybe. Now, the question again is cube action. Again, I think it's a take. Mochi's going to make the five point. If he doesn't get hit back, it's going to be a pass. I think, well, that's a pretty good anchor, though. Might not be pass, but I think it's, you know, it's got 24 numbers that make the bar, all sixes and ones. And that's not going to be pretty for Mark if he makes that five prime. I think it's got to be a double. Of course, the six is duped for coming out, but if he rolls a six, he's got time to come out later. He would make the bar. I think he didn't double. Okay, I would have thought it might be a double there, but could he be thinking it's too good? Am I that far off? You make the bar, and the question is, do you come up and let him attack or not you? Not you let him attack. Don't you? I don't know. You do come up. Okay. And a double six joker. He's still a little bit down in the race, but that's his best game plan. With What else can he do? He doesn't want to stay back there on the 22 points. He's got to come out. I think he'd come out with three and come around with one. And he did. I think that play was pretty much forced, even though you're down in the race by four pips. Uh, we'll see. <clears throat> that was a big swing as usual. Double sixes has a tendency to change the game quite often. It's not always for the better of the player who rolled it. All right, we have a very close race. Nothing's going to happen until somebody leaves a shot or rolls a joker. Now, some people make the three-point here. That's a waste of pips. <clears throat> You're basically saying, I'm not going to get a shot here. I'm racing. You don't waste pips by bringing it down low like Mochi just did. <laughs> like Mark just did. I'm sorry. Like Mark just did. So the play I wouldn't have made, he made right away. <laughs> what am I missing? I wouldn't have wasted those pips, but maybe he does want to have more threats for a shot or maybe more time to sit there. I don't know. I got to study that one. <laughs> Open mouth and search foot. I'm giving a whole lecture on why you don't make that play, and Mark and the Grandmaster makes it right away. Well, that's why they have me doing commentary. I provide the humor, don't I? That's what I'm here for. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you how, how to play. Wouldn't have been my play. Okay, he's up a little in three, you know, 12 pips in the race. I think you have to play off the 14, and he does. And now. Up nine pips in the race and all those crossovers. I think it's a double because I'm not sure of the take. I think it's a pass, but for sure it's a double. So Mochi doubles. And I think Mark has a pass here. I think when you add up the crossovers and the pip count and he's thinking about, it. there's nothing wrong with thinking about it. Plenty of time on the clock. The eyesight helps us in this position better than Keith count because it does count crossovers. You got four crossovers versus three. <clears throat> Must be close if Mark is thinking this long. I My tendency was just to drop it. Mark's taking his time. Win or lose, PR is very important to these guys, not only for your ability to get in, but also how you are seated and also um, for your records, for your just to know how you're playing. Okay, he took. I, I was a little surprised at that. I thought it was a pass. It'll be interesting to see. There's a whole bunch of different formulas you can use in races. John O'Hagan taught me seven of them. I only use six over the board because I'm in the interest of time. I was a little surprised at that take. Anybody in the chat 
know if that was a take or pass? Almost a blunder to pass, says Amir. Very good, Mark. Mark got it right. I got it wrong. Okay. It's almost a blunder to pass. So he was right to take it. It's not turning out real pretty for him. So I turned out to be right, actually. Over the board, I would stop and be quiet, shut my mouth and use formulas, and I probably would have made the right decision. Yeah, right. Double six when it doesn't count. Okay. Mochi takes a two-point lead. Five away, seven away. That doesn't change things too much. You pretty much play uh, what we call normal match score, NMS. And I'm very happy to say I came up with that when we made Extreme Gamma and we were trying to figure out how to call these things. So I came up with normal match score. I steal as much as I can from the masters and make up whatever I can't find. Anchor versus anchor. You'd much rather have your opponent's five point than your opponent's three point. What it means you call the three point? The butterfly point. You're sort of neither here nor there. That's another one of the many terms that Michi's books, his wonderful books have come up with <clears throat> that we're all using today. The double tiger, the butterfly point, getting off the mountain. I, I just think it's so creative. Okay. Race is about even. I don't think you can run with all those builders. One, two, three, four. That's 16 pointing numbers. Doing it quickly. And double ones is 17 pointing numbers. So he had to keep the anchor. And now I think that Mark's in a little trouble again. Behind a five prime is not a fun place to be, but the pip count is what's keeping him in the game. It's hard to double when you are um, when you're down in the race. It's almost it's almost always wrong, even on the three point. This is not a fun roll. I, I, I don't know what you do here. Yeah, double, double, double slot. You're not likely to get a direct shot here. So, and you don't, or do you? You do, and he hits. So now he's sorry he double slotted, <clears throat> but I think he's got to hit anyway, doesn't he? <clears throat> Even though there's, yep, he's got to hit anyway. It's his best chance. He's lucky not to get hit back. Well, I shouldn't use the word luck. I don't believe in luck. It's all odds. It's not luck. <clears throat> I want to get away from that kind of thinking. Fortunate? I'll use other words. <laughs> Semantics. All right, what do you do here? Do you hit and cover? That's the concept. With those two blots on the other side? Oh, oh, he got, oh I'm sorry. He, got, he has to come in with the five. In and out, okay. That's great. Five four cleans it up. Doesn't hit, but I mean it's great. That's every roll makes somebody happy. This is great for Mark. He's happy to be missed. No, it's Mochi that got missed. Not great for Mark. I got it backwards again. There's, these guys look alike. I have trouble between Mochi and Mark. They certainly play alike. They're pretty close to. How they play. Okay. Do you come out and make the 11 point or do you stack the 8 point? And the answer is you don't do either. Asking the right question is a big part of this game. I just asked the wrong question. I didn't even think of his that play. It wasn't on my radar. It might have gotten there eventually. That was a pretty fast play for Mochi to make a big play like that. But when you have a five prime and there's a blot in your opponent's board, you can take some chances that you wouldn't take otherwise. Is this a cube? Go back to the same question. Is it a take? There aren't many covers that don't give him a, a break. I don't think it's a double. But he did. So it must have been a double. I wasn't sure about the double here, especially leading two to nothing. If I mark, I'm taking. I mean, if he covers with a four or five, 
that gives Mark an opening either to hit or get out. He's up in the race. I don't see why he doesn't take it. This is over my uh, pay scale. He did take it. Okay. He did take it. I would have I would have grabbed it because I wasn't, you know, this is reverse Wolsey's law. I wasn't sure of the double. But Mochi obviously was sure of the double. And if Mochi doubled, uh, that's the way to bet. I wouldn't bet against it. Bill, you going to join me? For a little while. Bill Riles is going to help me out here. Now we're going to have some intelligence on this stream. <laughs> we got round 11 posted and round 12 is running in back good, mode. Good analysis. job. Yeah. I don't know how you have time to eat or do anything with all the work you guys are putting in. I know what you're doing. You're letting Tara do all the work. Well, as much as I can. Very smart. Okay. 3-2 to play. I know the three comes down. Do you cover the ace or do you can't bring it in? I, I do not cover the ace. I leave the blot on the 22 or on your three point. That dupes the ace. On the... Well, again, if he didn't have a blot in the, in the inner board, I wouldn't. Oh, see, again, Mochi doesn't listen to me. I guess that's the reason. That's a very good formula for success. Don't listen to Phil. Because getting hit is bad. Worked for him for 20 years so far. I'm... Never leave a shot. Never leave a shot. <laughs> this is not pretty. Uh, not being able to cover or lift. You just got to hope. And the hope worked out. You got to like Mochi's cube here a lot at this point. Mm. Got to shift. It's See, shifted by. Told you it was a bad cube. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe not. Maybe he just plays and let he rolls an ace, he rolls an ace. No, but you're letting him have the threes on the other side of the board. I think you hit to maybe minimize. So. That was my initial yeah, reaction. Yeah. Then I started second yeah. guessing myself. My initial but... reaction was whatever Bill says I wouldn't do, but look at you were right. <laughs> and because you give him too many shots on both sides. Look at uh -oh. this roll, close, close board, out. close board, and hit. That was the what we call a bazooki, where you get to call your roll. That's what you would have called a double five. Let's say, uh... all right, gammon chances here are about 55, 60 percent because of those three checkers outside. Now you clear the five. Look oh, out. all right. Mark may may be able to get off this gammon now. He's got his favorite to get off. Oh, and a six one. Let's He's got a shot. Go. Got a shot Let's to win. win. Do you take two off? I do. Or do you slow him down to win more Does games by ace? hitting? Of course, could... of course he rolls an ace. Yeah, but do you hit? Do you <laughs> hit or do you take two off? I take two off. <clears throat> gets me to five. Yeah, but hitting <clears throat> hitting gets you more gammons, I think. The chances of him dancing. But Mochi agreed with you, so you must be right. He wouldn't have gotten hit either way, and he and he got an extra checker off this way. Right. That's a tough one. You have to weigh that whether you hit or, or take one off. The chance of dancing, of course, if you get hit and you don't take one off, that not having having one less checker off really Once matters. He may get a shake at it. He does get a shake. He at it. does, and he gets Whoa. it. Wow! Yeah. What a swing! What a great double! I told you he should have doubled there. How many times did I say that? <laughs> Okay, that was big. Again, that was very small odds of getting a game in there. Okay, one away, seven away. The uh, always the burning question is: Does it matter if you get gammon if you're mochi, or do you care if you get win a gammon if you're mark? And the answer is not very much. All it does a is a bit, but a very little not bit. Much. Just takes away the free drop. So you play this as DMP. I mean, you, you'd take it if you get it, but yeah, it's it's gravy. you won't make any extra risk to, to get a gamut except right. maybe at the very end. It's gravy. Boy, uh, Mete was right this morning. That is the dirtiest keyboard I have ever seen. <laughs> this, Looking across. this is my new keyboard. This is your new keyboard. Yeah, I got this eight years ago and I've taken good <laughs> care of it. You should have seen what the screen looked like before I cleaned I mean, it. There's some handy wipes out here in the hall. I could bring some in for you if you'd like them. Yeah. I, it just doesn't feel right. If it, you know, I, I try to, I, I like it dirty. I, okay. I, that's okay. what I'm used to. Whatever. You, if you knew what that computer uh, keyboard has been through and where it's been, you wouldn't touch it. No doubt about that. <laughs> so you bought it eight years ago. You, what, from Ed O'Laughlin? <laughs> you know, that's an interesting story. 
That's one of the ways I really got serious about the game. I was at a tournament and Ed O'Loughlin was really a good player. And I was sort of a beginner. And he took me up to his room and he showed me how to use GNU. And yeah. he showed me how he played it 12 hours a day. And, and he, he taught me how to, he still does. He taught me how to use GNU. And then, of course, when <clears throat> when Snowy came out, this is before Snowy, he started using Snowy and then he started using Extreme Gamma. And he still plays 12 hours a day. And uh, if I played back in 12 hours a day, I think he'd have to shoot me. Unless, well, you know, this this uh, this game, and, and again, we're the Crawford game, and they're both playing relatively safely here. This this proves one thing, though. The dice aren't rigged. <laughs> Mark would have rolled an ace and hit. Yeah. Mochi yeah. would not have gotten set for the yeah. game. Right? And this so, is sort of an inside joke. Everybody <laughs> says, oh, the dice online are rigged, and Mark Olson is willing to, willing to offer a big prize to anybody who can prove that there's anything rigged about the dice. <laughs> And of course, it's but it's, we're joking around. Yeah, I think the dice live are rigged because I, when I play online, it seems very fair to me. When I'm playing live, all kinds of stupid things happen. So if I think they're rigged, I'm I, they're more likely to be rigged live. Well, did and, you see? I, I might have mentioned this to you, but Roberto Litzenberger played someone. I forget who it was, in in Cherry Blossom this past weekend, and they each danced twelve times in a row. There's 24 consecutive dances. On a how many point board? Five point board. On a five point board. Okay. That's pretty crazy. That is crazy. 24 yeah. straight. Well, I once won a, a big match uh, rolling four double sixes in a row. And if you calculate that, that's 1,740,000 to one. Get myself in the frame or whatever. You're being framed. You're being oh, framed. Whatever. So you guys have oh. to go this way. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're good. Both we're good. Scoot together. Okay. Okay. And do you want to make sure that both you are in the frame at all? Times? I'm trying to keep Bill out of the frame. Thanks, Sarah. If Tara. we get too close together, the people, yeah. the viewers might begin to talk, you know? No, they're okay. going to talk anyway, Bill. We may as well, <laughs> we may as well just make love right now. Okay. All right. Let's get into this game. It's very nice to have a five prime. It's almost as nice as having a six prime, but I'm certainly coming out here with the two and thinking about my ace. Is there is there a reason to slot the three point instead? I don't think so. No, I, I'm coming out and then playing six five. I think. I think so. That takes the double deuce hit away. But from there's the, anyway. there's the same number of eights as sevens. So you might just go to the seventeen. You might come out all the way. So that's the question. I think that's what he's pondering. The one thing you don't do is you don't break your five prime. Watch it happen now. Watch it. Now they say it's the one thing you don't do. Right. Jim Pasco hits loose here. I know that. He wants to get into a back game. He's taking plenty of time on this play because he's got plenty of time. He's got plenty of time. Okay. That's my play. That was that was my, Takes my away the double thought. deuce. Okay. That's my initial thought. You get the most uh, most outfield coverage and infield coverage and everything else. I don't got to go to the six. I don't think you break your six point. Just go. I mean, you're lucky, you're lucky enough just to yeah. not leave a shot with one of those two. Well, Gammons again don't matter much. I think you play 10 2. There you go. And that's a direct miss. <clears throat> a direct miss. So you just play to the seven point. Or do you bring two down? So maybe you bring two down. Maybe you slide the back. Hmm. That way you can't hit oh, yeah, you don't want that ace. Yeah, you might be right. I I think you saw the play. I know I, it's difficult and, for you to say that. No, but, and you're, <laughs> look, you're, you're right. That's what Mark did. Yeah. And now you just uh, advance the, to make it a six prime. Okay, he's got a, well, he doesn't make much difference. There's almost no gamins here. There's very little chance to pick up a second checker. You just make the two point here, bring it home. And and, uh, uh, and take your point and, and buckle your seatbelt right. for the next game. Well, the other at this point, for both players, you don't worry whether you're going to win or lose. It, that's probably already written in the stars. You just try to play well, and that's all you try to do, and make sure your PR looks good. In Mochi's case, I mean, Mark has kind of had a tough morning, so he's fallen back a little bit. Oh, he did. But Mochi is. You know, he's going to advance on PR in all likelihood. 
So he can't, uh, I mean, he could, he could get into the points, but certainly on PR. Yeah. So he's just got to make sure he doesn't have a blow up game anywhere that, uh, that he's got a pretty good buffer on the PR right uh-huh. now. Well, from the very, very start, that's he was a huge favorite. He could lose every match and probably still get in the final eight because of PR. Exactly. He's just so. a, that good a player. All right, you peel two here. Oh, he's got to come in. Five and two. I play five to three, don't you? Yeah, you may get lucky. I think you got to play five to three. Well, no. Is he afraid of getting picked and passed with an ace? Mm-hmm. Not that really, might be, but you, you know what? You, you're not going to have a shot at it anyway. No, but you're giving him one, two, one, three, one, four, uh, to pick and pass and dance and give him more chances to roll a six and come out. So I think he doesn't give that to him. That's right. Plus, he has better outfield control this way. Mochi gets the six. Wow, we were writing off this game for Mochi, weren't we? It didn't look very good, and now comes out and does he keep going? Does he give him a seven? six numbers in return for improving the race and having a better chance to bring it home. I do. I would give him the six numbers. I would go all the way. And he did. Good play. It must be a good play. That, that was my play. I would have went the other way. No, you're wasting. You're putting another checker on the East Point. You're killing the race. His race is his best but chance. See, most you could, wouldn't have gotten by him. But your odds of getting a shot and hitting it as opposed to winning the race. Grand. That's what you're weighing. And obviously, I'm right because Mochi did it. <laughs> wow. Looks well, like, we have uh, another quick match. What the, What about the PRs here? I wouldn't be surprised if they're both under two. You might not have many decisions at all. You know, the kind of rest. Mochi had a couple of cube decisions that I wasn't sure of. I'm sure Mochi was right, but there were some that maybe were on the cusp that might cost him a little PR. That first take of marks I want to look at, because that was what I was passing. I want to look at the very first game take on the race. Kind of interesting today. You've kind of been a magnet for short matches, it seems. Yeah. Are you saying the stream matches seem to be going shorter than most of the others? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think they're they're pretty much nervous about having me talk about them. I would well, it limits the number of opportunities for you to critique their play. If it's, you, you should see when we have a family gathering and I stand up to talk, you should see what my family looks like. They're scared to death. Okay, let's see how we played. We played better. Whoa, look at here. Whoa, Mark played at 105 <laughs> and Mochi 308. Congratulations, Mark. You went down with honor and dignity. In fact, you, you're basically a winner for going down. He says he's sorry he didn't get the two points, but this could this has got to help him a lot. And nothing hurts Mochi 308. That's gonna hurt Mochi's average. It's gonna hurt his average, but uh not enough to not enough to knock him out. All right, I want to look at that first cube, the racing cube where I thought he had a pass, and it was a double and a take, and it was of course it was to take, and a pass would have been a point oh six seven error. So it was a clear, clear take. Again, Mark isn't going to play at one point something and uh, if he's had a pass. Now Mark is, uh, we needed that point. And it helped him a lot. He, yeah. He's right on the cusp of uh, making it or not. By the way, you're hearing jets go over this. There's some kind of an air show going on. There's some really fancy jets going back and forth. And maybe we have to close the windows here. I think we do. I'm going to go. Do that real quick. We'll get ready for the next match, which is going to feature Mochi again. Yeah, and hopefully they we should be here shortly. And I'm sure Wilson's listening to this. I suspect uh, the round the results through round eleven have probably been updated. So hopefully they're going to show them to us on the on the stream here mm-hmm. shortly. That was a great. Quick Mark match. And, uh, Mark and Mochi reviewing their, uh, their okay. play. Uh, yeah. You All right, the next. Link to that. Uh, link to what? The results. Yeah, one second. I just want to announce that coming up next is Mochi and Zednik. So that's going to be a hell of a match, too. Here we go. Well, that's the third sheet. Let's see. Okay, they're, they're posting it. Here we go. Olsen is. Uh, Number eight on the <laughs> wow. So that was uh, 
That was, he's number eight because of PR, not because of exactly the, yeah, the last two are points. So that that helped the uh, PR really helped him there. It really helped him. That's what he needed. He needed he that, to play what, well. 105, 108, whatever it was. Yeah, it almost didn't matter that he lost the match compared to get, getting the PR. That's his best chance of qualifying, probably. And he's look at this, Ali Hader and Bayar, three four zero, March three three eight. So every yeah, every single one hundredth in okay. PR matters. And we have only three more matches to determine who goes forward. Um, and I know Mark would sort of like to go forward at his own turn. Oh, he, he, <laughs> oh is he? He's and they all to want to. They all Mark, want to. Mark is really, oh yeah, really geared. Who we got? Damn your Edo has snuck in the number six here. Yeah, Edo timed out and had a little bit of a penalty there, but uh, he, and but they but they they gave him some leniency because there were computer problems and it was shown that there were. So they were really nice about it. It was a very fair rule. Although right now. Regardless of that, uh, I mean, they didn't. He still lost that match. I presume he loses the and match. He's advancing on points at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But so, uh, but there's some complication there. If he advances strictly on points, it might not count. I'm not sure uh, the full ruling. Okay. But uh, poor Ito. He's play, He's playing his heart out. He's playing great. He's he's an amazing player from Israel. Uh, and uh, he and David Presser are are both. Teachers of mine, so, uh, of mine, I work with them all the time. Oh, yeah. I love these guys. Zdenik, Dagvin, yeah. Nietzsche, Dirk, Thomas Muir, Ido, Mochi, and Olsen. What a lineup. Yeah. And the closest are, uh, who did I say? Ali and Giorgio Castellano. I thought, just, I thought Justin was moving up some, too. Well, let's see. Where's there, Justin? Nope, there was Justin on He that. started out pretty bad. He and, had a bad. And getting better. He had a bad start. Yeah. His PRs were his first match was a six, so which is really bad for him. Okay, well that's great. So, uh, all right, next is going to be so Mochi we, and ZZ. And did we see uh, who did we see after that? Justin, Justin and Ernst, Ichi and Dirk. and then Michi and Dirk. We're going to close with a bang. Well, the uh, the really key ones on the, I mean that eighth spot is the key right now. Right, mm -hmm. marks in with a three three eight PR average. And Ali has 3.40. Yeah, but I have to look at the, the 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 total points thing. There may be the fifth and sixth and seventh players and points. There may be a fight there we haven't noticed yeah, yet. Too. Yeah, we got to look at that. So there's I, I two ways. I think they're pretty clear yeah. on points. Oh, they are. It's, there's two ways to qualify for the top eight. Six players are based on their points of winning one point for the match and one point for the PR. And two are selected strictly on PR of the remaining ones that are not part of those top six so yeah. you get rewarded if you never win a match you'll still get rewarded if you your pr is low now they can't use headphones except like noise canceling headphones. okay so and that's what uh, z has on there and i don't think you need it in that room it's so damn quiet yeah, in, that room. It's, it's, in fact it was so quiet in that room i don't think i could concentrate I'm not. I'm just not used to that <laughs> i need some noise i think i'd like them to filter in some noise down there they don't hear these planes here, too. Justin, he doesn't look happy. Well, Justin never looks happy. <laughs> I love Justin, by the way. He's funny. Oh, he's, he's funny. He's I love fun He's got the greatest dry wit of oh, yeah. anyone. Yeah. He's just, uh, well, he's perfect for London. He just moved from, from New York to London. He's He'll fit right in being sarcastic and nasty. Not well, that they're all that way. I'm just saying it. But it's. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the table in front of me. We were just glancing at it there a while ago. But it seems to me that the real key right now is that number eight spot, which is Olsen and uh, Ali. Uh huh. And Olsen is three three eight average, and Ali three four zero average. So, and and they're gonna. Well, and Ito is fighting for that spot. I think Justin is fighting for that spot. And of course, we laughed that. That was only through eleven, so this one point oh five of March well, that's gonna push is not him. in there. That's going to push him way up. Yeah, that's going to push him way right. up. So that was only through eleven. This was match thirteen. Yeah, this is an exciting match. So Mark really needed that, but of course it was a great low PR. It wasn't a tremendous number of decisions, so it's not going to be as as weighty as it might otherwise be. I don't understand. PR is PR, whether it's a one point one game match or a sixteen game match, right? No, it's a weighted PR. What? An accumulative. Like if you if you and I are playing, right? yeah, or anybody, say you play a three, yeah, on a match that took 
a hundred decisions. You had a hundred decisions. Yeah. And you play one in a match that only had 10 yeah. decisions, then you're going to be at about 2.9 or something. I mean, it's weighted by how many decisions are involved. That's how they get the PR. The cumulative But once PR. you get the PR, whatever that is, it didn't matter whether it was a one-game match or a 10-game match when it no, goes what to it the is. final. You're, you're right. But, once, but the influence of later matches depends on how many decisions are in those matches. Oh, they put all of it together. They, yeah. Oh, my God. So it's a cumulative. Uh, this is way over my head. <laughs> thank you, Xavier, for making Extreme Gammon and doing such a good job. And thank you for your dedication to improving it in the future. We're, we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. But it's, uh, you know, again, that one Mark just played was was great. Oh. But it's not as great as it. I mean, had it been in a, had it been a, a longer 100 match? decision yeah. match yeah. Okay. as opposed to a. 20 to I see match, what you're saying. It would have made much more. I see difference. what you're saying. I, I played the finals of a tournament at 0. .06. It was a one-game match. Uh, it was a you know eight cube with a gammon against Carter. Uh, I think he played at 1.2. Okay, there it is. It, and it, again, nothing. look here. Z's blown up a little bit. Mochi is the absolute low PR now. Uh -huh. And Mochi has about a one PR lead on Olsen between seventh and eighth. Yeah, so here, here's something else that could happen, though. Isn't it possible that Mochi could get enough points to qualify that way, and then his match PR won't matter? That's potentially true, and then that would open it up for maybe Ollie. Right. It because, uh, like, Ido and uh, Mir and Dirk. Well, how many total points does Mochi have? Maybe, well, is he close? Back, come back around. Yeah, is he, if he's close to, uh, to getting into the, to get count. Into the count thing. That will really help some other players, and of course, knock out people with the count thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what it's a great dynamic. Oh, I book. love, I love the format. It's very, very okay. So Mochi has twelve and a half. Ito has fourteen. Um, so that's not out of the realm of possibilities. And Mark has thirteen. Mochi has 12. yeah. So uh, Ito needs to win a couple more points to get to be. It, it's still yeah. yeah a very dynamic situation. Fluid, fluid, very fluid. Okay, we're gonna we're waiting for ZZ and Mark, which will start shortly. I That's hope. right. Uh, F A Dadezi. I'm I'm not. I hope I pronounce that right. Not butcher you too much. We're calling it average PR, but that is in effect what it is: the total equity being divided by the total decisions. So. It's not yes. divided by each match. It's divided by the total decisions. Divided by the total decisions. So a, a 50 move match is going to be twice as much as a 25 move match. Essentially. In, in a sense okay. of, of its influence on okay. the total. I got you. All right. We're waiting for ZZ. Maybe ZZ's probably still finishing up another match because this is fast. Um, I can't wait to see Zednik and Michi. I mean, Mochi, I mean, where do you see this kind of this, this kind of competition? It's just and just back to back to back yeah, every yeah, match we yeah. have. Every match is just, you know, we were texting back and forth and talking to Wilcox at lunch. Mochi and I and and a couple of others in Wilcox. And he's he's sorry he re, he's following it closely. Here's well, a guy. I saw that post he made a little bit earlier on Facebook. I didn't see that. He said, "I'm having to watch these damn NBA playoff games and." He'd and not be, be here. Yeah, yeah, he'd rather be here. I do. I, that's what he expressed to me as well. He, I mean, I'm sure he's not the only one. David Wells was supposed to come. He's very sick that he couldn't make it. He, he had a back problem, and he really desperately wanted to be here. And he would certainly be a contender. He's been playing at world class level uh, tremendously lately. And uh, well, but, David, uh, yeah, David's a hell of a player, and. Uh, he was. He, a, he would have been. He would have been a, a factor. Oh, I would have. Put, I would have placed him as a favorite to make the top eight. Uh, David was once, I think, the number five giant in the world when he was playing a lot. He's one of these other. He's one of these guys that gave up a lot of backgammon for poker, but he's pretty much back into backgammon now, and he's also become a teacher. He's one of our. You know, teachers. it's funny since we've got a bit of time here and aren't neglecting a match. Uh -huh. And I thought about this earlier, and I didn't really have an opportunity to to say it but it was funny when you were talking about 
Mochi's benevolence and so forth, like when he was taking helping Joe Russell's daughter and yeah. all these sorts of things. Yeah. And you see that in a lot of players. And then we were talking, you were saying how you, perhaps you'd given so much money to, to Mochi that you're like the uncle to his kids or something, <laughs> paying right. for their college. Actually, I've I, given more to Akiko, but that's that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I get tickled. There's two guys in Houston, one of whom you know from way back, probably Sandy Lubetkin. Oh, who, sure. Who at one time was one of the best players in the world. Uh, you know, and then got out of backgammon and became a heart surgeon or something. I mean, go figure, right? What, what a waste of a life. And there's a, another player, an older guy in Houston, doesn't play much anymore, but his name's Benny Habib. And uh, apparently way back in Houston in the 80s or something, him and Lubetkin pay, played for money all the time. And Lubetkin was a hell of a lot better player. And Benny laughs that he put Lubetkin through medical school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's happened. That's happened. Well, uh, well, there was a fellow in Chicago that used to play Dean Munch for money all the time. And he lost a lot of money. He got steamed like crazy one game. And I was there. Uh, Dean is playing him. The guy's stuck. I don't know how many thousands of dollars. And he gives Dean a four cube, a recube. Dean beavers and claims without a roll. <laughs> it was a claim. <laughs> you, you I'll never something. forget that. And the look on the guy's face when he realized that uh, that he'd done that, but Dean had made one big mistake. You know what it was? You can drop a beaver. No. Oh. So as soon as he claimed, the guy dropped the beaver. <laughs> so it's, uh, but he was feeling sorry for him. That's why he said. That's why he said claim too, and let him know it. Kind of some. Funny, Most people don't funny, know that you could drop a beaver. Funny things we see. <laughs> oh, uh, stories I could tell. Oh. Stories I could tell. All right, let me get ready for the next match. I think we got a little time here. Oh, you know, there's something I would like to do. Um, since we have a little time, let me bring it up. I mentioned earlier that the, even though it's a relatively small number of players, 24, that it takes a hell of a large group to uh, uh, to run the event. And I want to give some acknowledgement to the team. And I just got a list of it. Kansu is our local communicator with Turkish Back Evan Community. He's an FM Gammon employee and Fuat lent him to us. This is coming from Fuat, who is the tournament director. Not Fuat, I'm sorry. Yeah, Fuat is the tournament director for Istvar. But this this uh, communication uh, came from Mate uh, Ferrer, who is our director. Wilson, he's our graphic and technical master and art director who is doing the most to provide the best streaming possible. I got, got a kick out of it this morning. Wilson sent a text saying, I, I haven't had breakfast for, I, I've been so busy, I haven't had breakfast for two days. I said, force yourself. <laughs> it's an old Jewish joke, but I thought it played well. So I went and got him some fruit. Okay, so Wilson is terrific. He runs this whole thing and does everything with, to do with the streaming and the technical. Uh, Mate, as we know, uh, is uh, our tournament director. And number 65, Giant? <laughs> okay, good for him. Uh, Hussein, uh, a local, uh, I think he's from well, Iran originally. Iran, lives in Turkey Iran now. originally lives in Turkey now. Okay, he's my he's my award for the nicest guy. He does everything. Super nice guy. Yeah. He does everything. He's one of the great, uh, he yeah. transcribes a lot of matches uh, okay. all the time. He, he's the he, co-tournament director and website designer for UBC and Galaxy. The guy is really, his technical he, skills good. are great. He's good. Uh, Tui uh, is the head of the Galaxy shop and main lifter of our spirits. He's a, just a good, cool guy. Nesh, self-employed employee of Nesh Production, uh, who is obsessed with backgammon and the community to make backgammon content for us to show the world how beautiful backgammon is. Nesh is a photographer, videographer, video, kind of a videographer, or whatever that is. Videographer. Videographer. That's the word. <laughs> so here's and a, uh, you know makes. Uh, uh huh. Movies, online yeah. movies, you know, so forth. That's so great the work. first night we get here, I say, uh, Mete, uh, let, let me come to your room and work on this stuff. He says, no, I, I have a roommate. I don't want to bother him. You, you, uh, I'll come to your room because I don't have a roommate. So he comes to my room. The next day we sit down at breakfast and uh, Nesh sits down next to Mete and uh, I, I shake hands with him. And Mete says, this is my roommate. I said, oh, that's the a-hole. You <laughs> <laughs> see the look on his face. <laughs> You have to have that. You had to be there. Okay. Mark uh, Olson, of course, is the CEO of the entire galaxy 
And he's also, of course, a BG giant. And uh, we just saw he's not a bad player. Most people who play under two are pretty good. So uh, and there's not that many. When I say most people, how many are there that can play under two? By the way, there's a lot of them now. Yeah. Aside from the guys at this tournament. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you it's hard to consistently play under oh, three nobody, or this, yeah. that, and the other. Yeah. But there are tons of players. That yeah. are going to have individual games, you know, in the ones occasionally, right, in but, the twos. But occasions. there's also a bunch of players that I think, if in this event, would average under three PR that that you could pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wilcox, uh, Victor. Oh yeah. Uh, that aren't here. Uh, Wilcox, Victor, of course, Sander has to be on that. Oh yeah. And list. you get uh, uh, Top Travi, Jerry Tansy, Travi Tansy in in the states. Uh, Marty Storer. I'm not sure Marty would play under three. He's right there, close. He's to right there. He's, he's right he's there. Like, John O'Hagan is right there and sometimes does Store is the lowest. Let's not the forget Thomas US on the BMAB. Is that right? Yeah. Let's not forget Thomas Tentland. Oh, yeah. All the you can. Uh, uh, and sure Seb, 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 Seb Wilkinson. Seb Wilkinson. Julian. There's some, uh, there's, I mean, there must be, there must be 10 to 15 players that might play a David Wells that might play under 3PR. Yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. It is amazing. And, and the uh, difference just the consistency that they play with is the real differentiation. Yeah. And um and yeah. this 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 is a you know, the other thing I I will mention, sometimes when they play like Mark's play, I bet you that if you looked at Mark's mistakes and rolled them out, some of those won't even be mistakes. Yeah, well, we'll uh, they'll all of these are being run in much yeah. higher ply analyses. So now the, the other side of the coin is some of the ones that were shown to be right for him might turn out to be a little wrong. Yeah. So extreme gambling is just not perfect. It's perfect on an opening three one. I really trust it there to get that right. Yeah, here beyond that, I, I have a problem. Uh, Ueda from the U oh from yeah Japan. Uh, Ueda Hidaki uh, Kazuki Kazuki from Japan. Uh, Hero. From Japan, uh, it's Yaki. He to uh, you know what's his name? Uh, he's got that great nickname. It's, Japan's got a bunch of hidden guys, and Iran's got some Amir Shragi and uh, uh, yeah, and those yeah. guys are are really to some degree under the radar screen. That yeah, because is, they don't travel they enough don't outside. Travel. We don't see that much. Well, we them. see them in Cyprus and Monte Carlo. That's about it. Yeah. It's so, a shame. Uh, it's a shame. But that's great. I mean, it's great for the world, you know? Oh. And um, I have a completely different view of Iran. I, you know, I'm, a, I'm an American Jew. So I didn't have the warmest feelings for, for Iran, but I have the warmest feelings for its people. Absolutely. So, you no know, and, and, about, from backgammon. And that's something, I mean, all of us that travel a lot and play backgammon, you, you learn to, you learn that all people all around the world basically similar in many respects i mean they're you know they're looking to enjoy lives provide for their families have mm -hmm. some security this and you know, it's all the same it's the governments that screw everything up all the people for the most part you know are looking for the same thing absolutely man. well there's un one other thing that all back mm players have in common well there's a couple things i don't know one that's dumb they're all intelligent people you can't become a great back mm player if you're dumb uh they all love competition and they're all perfectionists uh and they're all very pragmatic so that helps you come to a lot of common ground there uh, they're all a little nuts or they wouldn't be dedicating so much of you know another to thing and I, I think i heard you mention this the other day on the stream perhaps and we've talked about it before another thing you'll see almost universally among top backgammon players is their willingness to help others and and discuss positions and explain absolutely. things and i'm almost without exception absolutely uh, I, I, I'm not going to name names. I've only known one giant that was a jerk about explaining things or something when it came up. I was in a chouette with him in New York years ago, and he's a famous giant. And I, I made a play, and after the game was over, I said, was that the right play? He says, are you paying me for lessons? Yeah. I mean, that's the only guy that that's once. And the fact that it happened to be once in 70 years yeah, yeah. tells you what the community is. He's the exception that proves the rule. You know, and, and another thing, I think all the things we've talked about, but the vast majority of them are funnier than hell, too. They have great, great sense of humor. humor yeah. you know? Except you and me. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah. All right, so we're getting ready. What time is it? It says we're getting we're ready. Eyes on so the chat. I'm going to do that. Got uh, 
seven minutes until 5 p.m. round, what will this be? 14 coming up. Round 14. So three more rounds. If I if I count correctly, 14, 15, 16, that's three. Yes, sir. See, that's why I'm a good backgammon player. I know how to count. That, that math. The math. Just, understanding and proficiency. It took it. me less than 10 minutes to figure out there's three more rounds. Anybody have any good comments or questions on the chat? We'll keep trying to keep an eye on it. We're always interested in yeah, your we're in the chat line here. So if you've got questions, comments, critiques, uh, suggestions, whatever, just want to hear your name mentioned yeah. on the on the stream. If you want to we'll donate any money that. to the Symborg Foundation, I'm here. Well, like you say, I mean, this is next to the old airport in Istanbul, which has been closed down for the most part, apparently. But there is some kind of air show going on. Yeah. And there is some some great uh aviation demonstrations well, going on out here in front of us. We're on the 14th yeah. floor on a Mochi and I got up for breakfast, big got up for lunch, walked outside to see these two jets you know almost collide right in front of yeah. us. It was really exciting. It's really fun. It's but, an air show. Uh, Okay, I'm watching for the next feed. You know, it, it's interesting because I've noticed, um, and us being here in in Istanbul, um, seems like you know a lot of Turk Turkish people are playing, and they're going to certainly play in this Stavder tournament. But a lot seem to be watching. It's been a pretty good uh, Iranian audience. You know, we've got some Iranian players here, yeah. and they seem to have a lot of following from the homeland. Um, Amir Ragi and, and oh, others. Are, Iranians uh, are about as passionate about backgammon as any group that I know. Uh, and uh, it's a shame it's hard for them to travel and be here as much as they'd be here. Yeah. Uh, but um, so they follow it and they're great online. Justin <laughs> did well early, but he's kind of fallen back a little bit here recently. Oh, yes. So he, uh -huh. he's, uh, he's not out of it, but it, it's, it's a, tough route for him to okay. to get home now but he is going to be on our what 16th stream 16th round stream i think is justin and ernst yeah justin and he's, he's the 15th the six, 15th the okay. 16th we're going to end with a bang michi and uh dirt michi and dirt okay dirk 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 and so I think he does. I think it's his Dirk, but he just tells me dear to pull my leg. I think he's just pulling my leg. Just to see, see if so he wants to make you look yeah. stupid, mispronouncing it. Right. He keeps telling me he, can, he always corrects me, Dirk. And I, I think he's kidding. I just, I, you know, and I said, if my name is Feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and I didn't take too great offense, right? But I was introduced to someone downstairs during the lunch break. Uh -huh. And we sat there and talked to him a while. And, and uh, you know, finally, I said, well, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch, you know, he had, he had introduced himself, but I didn't catch his name. It was a, an international name. And he introduced himself again. And he says, that's great. He says, you know, it really has been nice to, to meet you, Phil. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> no, I'm I'm Bill, you know. He, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, I, I get the two of y'all mixed up. I've seen yeah. you together. Excuse me, I got to go throw up and I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you and me mixed up? Or just me and your name wrong? Phil, yeah, Phil. Our names wrong. Yeah. I, I hope that was it. Because I'm so much better looking than you. I just Yes, Ryan won, Ryan won the Texas UBC USA, but his uh, university studies Man's didn't, got didn't allow him to come over. Bad priorities. Bad yeah. priorities. I hate it when work and education get in the way. And family. And game. family. I mean, you got to get I, rid of all that stuff. I did. <laughs> I never let any of my wives interfere with my backgammon. That's my advice. <laughs> All right. I'm waiting for the feed for yeah, the next match. Uh, it should be very won't soon. Be, won't be too long. Very soon, I'm sure. But, you know, all of these guys, and, and again, I haven't looked at the, the most recent table, but uh, we lost him. We're waiting for the players to arrive at the table because we're not going to start the match without them. I think that's that's how kind we are. We forgot to mention kindness. We will not start this match without the two players. 
By the way, when you play in the Istvar, that's not true. You get an automatic text on, you, on your phone. It says, go to table 16. You play <laughs> Sam. It starts at 10, and the clock starts whether you're there or not. And for either player, both players, penalty points if you're not there. I love that format. It's amazing. And I was reading uh, somewhere a post today. It was talking about the rules for the tournament, and, and you're right about starting the tournament. And you're not really allowed to take a break, but – you can't take one emergency break, which is limited to five minutes. And you mean, you're in, talking about in this tournament? In the Istadr. Oh, the in the Istadr. Event. Oh, yeah, the main, yeah. And if, but if you uh, do uh, exceed the five minutes, the clock is turned on. Uh -huh. Yeah, I noticed it's, it's interesting because average PR, it shows, you know, it doesn't show an average PR. So with this. Uh, but Edo, Edo know, looks like he might qualify on points. He may qualify on points. I think he has to qualify yeah, on points. I think he has to qualify on points. They won't let him qualify on PR because he has one match less that doesn't count because he timed out. But he's got a good... You know, he said that he had computer problems, and some people say, well, how can we prove that? And the, he did but prove you it. look like even Justin, Justin number yeah. 13 at 402, huh? Mehmet 412, uh, you've got something like 15 or 16 of the people of the 24 here are playing under four. Or I want to finish this point though about Ido, because yeah. for people who don't know the story, he did time out. He did claim it was computer problems. You, you, it's hard to prove that except that he had had computer breaks down a couple of times before and he did report it. And it was, it's documented that he did have that, that and it's not his computer, maybe in the Wi-Fi that there was one time he lost an entire minute before that incident where he timed out. Mm. So his story is very, very credible. As, I mean, he, not only would I believe the guy anyway, because I know him to be a very honest, good guy, but also because he's got proof that he, that the, his computer was stalling. Well, that's great. That's great. Who, who's wandering in here behind that's us? Mate. Mate. Yeah. Mate. Tournament Mate. director. Mate. John. Huh? John Giorgio, who uh, really... Uh, doesn't believe the, the dice is uh, okay here. Do uh -huh. you want to talk a little bit about this? Right now? Yeah, why? Well, no. No. Okay. We're about to start right now. I don't, I don't want to do this. Plus, I don't like to, it, I don't believe, I don't want to deal with people who believe in the flat earth either. Okay. Okay. That's a superstitious <laughs> bullshit. All right. Yeah. Okay. I don't, really. I, I understand. I don't, I don't deal with people like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, talking to asking me to talk to somebody who believes the dice online are rigged. I I, I, I I don't debate. There's a saying that never argue with a fool because people might not know the difference. And people who believe that the <laughs> dice online are rigged, you better don't just tell me about the bad rolls that you had and how your opponent rolls good. Do a show me a study of 10,000 rolls and show me that it isn't random and tell me why the dice are going to favor one side over the other. That's nuts. And they're now, playing tens of thousands of matches oh, a day. It's, I don't want to. How do they decide that? We're going to screw Phil yeah, right, <laughs> or, or whomever. Right? There's another thing. I'm, I'm 78 years old. I learned a long time ago to avoid negativity and avoid negative people. So I'm not going to deal with this guy. I don't care who he is. So even if he is my brother, that's who he's talking about. OK, all right. So it's my brother. All it's right. interesting. Uh, see, a lot of them come back into the room. There's Thomas Casimir. Yeah. In the background, ZZ sitting there. Sipping some orange juice. No, that's not orange juice. It's we, vodka. I'm we, sure that. I hope it's I'm orange sure. juice. Could I be, think. I think Mochi spiked it with could vodka. Be, could be a screwdriver or something, you know. Yeah. The the I always said in Chouettes, the most uh, the best investment you could ever make is buying your opponent's drinks. And I had a guy. In fact, we all know him. My friend Ralph Bettinger, who I love dearly and played Chouette with him for 40 years in Chicago. Uh, there was no way to get him drunk. I no matter, he, and we kept buying him. He loved brandy. He'd have brandy after brandy after brandy, and it helped his game. <laughs> and the more he, the more he took, the more it helped his game. Okay, I think I can log in. I'm going to check it out now. Okay, there's Mochi. So they. Uh... Both competitors are in the arena, so to speak, albeit a. So I'm getting a blank screen. So maybe I got. Table here. I'm getting a blank screen. Maybe I got it too soon. I'll try it again and refresh it. Looks like uh, Hussein is logging. Yeah. 
one of them in. Typically, they get one of them to more or less. Yeah, they get one, the then they let me know what the log is. Okay, there they are. Can you get in now? I'll try again. Okay, are you at play? That yeah, here we go. Here he goes. Seven, eight, enter. And I'm drawing a blank. He said play again. And... Oh, you don't have match. Ah, that's, thank you. You got good eye. Dot com mm -hmm. slash match slash. Now the number. They didn't hire me because I'm smart. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Now we're looking at the board. ZZs are going to be on top. Zednik against a guy named Mochi. And, uh, kind of an unknown in this event. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's really making a good showing. Him. Oh my God, both of them. <laughs> CC a finalist in Monte Carlo. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. And Mochi, uh, one of the well, few... CZ was. Uh, am I not right? Yeah, he was finalist in this event last year here. Was he? Okay. And then finalist in Monte Carlo. Wow, quite a year for the young man. Okay, here we go. Okay, they're off and running. Want to bet on the PR? I think one of them will be under one. I, under one. I'll 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 tell you what, and I'll bet that both of them are under two. Okay, that's that's that that would be an amazing match right there. Well, that's that's pretty. Except I don't bet. I'm not a gambler. But yeah. those are both pretty are oh, reasonable. You know, it's amazing. Those are reasonable propositions. Yeah. If you just said that five years ago, people would laugh. Right. I'm laugh saying one of them will be under one. Phil says they'll both be under two. And neither statement is unreasonable. Yeah. But I would bet, I if I had a really bet, I wouldn't bet they're both under two. One mistake <laughs> will put you at 2.6 or 2.0. You know, it's not going to happen. All right. Let's get into okay, this game. Here we go. It clearly is, is a bar point, let's isn't see. it? Oh, the five point. Five point. Almost yeah. always you make the five point instead of the bar point, and he does. Yeah, he doesn't want to. Sure. He gets rid of the blot, doesn't want to strip sure. his mid. So, uh, yeah, you take the Now, you are you are obviously anchoring. Where's the three? Do you play safe or do you slot? He slots. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, you got to you gotta try and develop a game somehow. Playing safe and putting... And having the anchors, you know, you know gives you some... Uh, well, you just, some insurance if I, you were to get hit. Yeah, I just don't like five checkers on my three point. <laughs> I think that's an that should be an axiom. But it's only four. It would be five if he had made the other play. <laughs> okay, now there's okay a, a possible people, team action. As Raggy would double, he says. Uh, Casper wants to double. He's losing the Another race. Guy says blunder potential. <laughs> It is a blunder. And this could be this. I like Dirk's law here. Which one could, is likely to be a blunder, the double or the no double? And I think the I think the double could be a blunder when you're down this many I'm, pips. I'm with you, Phil. Yeah, too many pips down, and he done. He rolled. Okay, cover and you slot again, and then you double. Yeah, now he's got it. Yeah, you cover and you slot. He, he's going to have the you shot. You double, you pass. He's going to have a blot. <laughs> I don't know. Might be a take. It's probably a take. Mochi himself came up with a rule that if you're down 23 or less holding the three point, you can probably take. He's got some counterplay here, but he could get hit. There's some gamins if you get hit here. The doubles, it's certain. I think he's got to let this go. I don't know. You're up 30 pips in the race, and I would pass also. <laughs> <laughs> What's the peanut gallery say? Casper says, take. Then I take. If Casper takes, me too. My two favorite words in backgammon. I use it all the time in shoeettes. Me too. If Casper takes, that's good enough for me. Amir said take, but I think he was talking about the prior role. Oh. But now in this role, probably even. Uh, we'll talk about I think you take a walk. Thomas here. Warling Hansen. I've, I've heard the name a lot. I think, is that a Danish player or he, he's taking? I'm not sure, but that's why I'm More sure. More easy double. take for Amir than the previous role. Uh-huh. That's the reason why I like Wolsey's Law. I'm not sure it's a take, so I know I'm doubling. Now, believe me, all that both players are thinking about is 
what is the proper PR play? Because in the long run, they know they'll win the game more that way. And they and here you're playing for PR. Now, if you're playing in a match where PR doesn't matter, you might think about some other things. But I think when you're at this level, you're still pretty much thinking about how do I make the right PR decision? You and let it go. He passed. I would have passed. I'm with him. You know, it's interesting. And, and we're in what? Round 14. Yeah. Both of these guys are going to advance. Yeah. I mean, it would take a couple of disasters, real train wrecks for them not to advance. Uh -huh. Now, were it the case, though, if one of them was uh, kind of on the cusp, would they adjust in any way? No way. They're still going to try and make the very best play. That's what makes them as good as they are. If they have a 1% chance of winning a match, they're going to work like crazy to make the right play. That's who they are. That's why they're who they are. Okay. That's the difference between you and them, Bill. Now, some guy, I mean, me and them. That? I meant GL Harvey, GLH, maybe? Yeah, that's GL Harvey. He said it was 216 pass. No, I, I don't know. What's he doing off the yacht? This guy's... He's got a yacht and a bunch of beautiful women. He goes up and down the, he the, can, he the can coast watch. in Florida. What's he doing watching backgammon? He can. He can. Uh, he's he's my hero. He's living oh, the wait, life. He says two sixteen on him. Okay, it was a, a take. So it was. Oh, a, it was a take. Sixteen blunder on the pass. Yeah, I said it was a, a take. Yeah, and most people were saying he he just the way he phrased it. I misinterpreted I what he said. So it was a take. That's going to really. So that's really, going to that's going to hurt his PR. Well, you you're hurt. probably yeah. lost your proposition now. Yeah, both play under two. Yeah, I and mean, I'm I'm still in the hunt because Mochi could play under one. Well, let me tell you something. He can make a point two error and still play under two. That's how good these guys are. If he doesn't make a single error and the match goes on longer, that won't, that mistake will won't put him over two pr. I've seen Mochi. I had a, I had a match with Mochi where he made a point four error. And played it under two PR. Now this one's interesting. It's five three to play. Okay, he he contemplated making the three point, but he went ahead and buttoned up. I would have made the three point to unstack, I think. But that's just now he gets to unstack with a four two. Yeah, he hit and continue, or does he bring two down? I'm making the four. Oh no, I'm hitting. Are you hitting? I'm a hit. I'm hitting, but do I bring two down or do I continue? You're making the four, huh? Yeah. All right, we got a one dollar bet. I say you have to hit. The unstacking now, is... Are we just going to assume Mochi is correct, or are we going to run we're, this? No, we're going to assume Mochi is correct. <laughs> He's going to be our XG. And it's good enough for me. That's one ply. It's better than one ply. He's three. He's four ply. But it must be close. But I think there's three questions. Do you hit? And if you don't, if you do hit, how do you play it? Or do you make the... Yeah, there, there's three, uh, three options there. Mm, I see two options. Yeah, three options. Two options of hitting it or making the four point. Yeah. Now, what I think if you hit, I do bring two down and it's fewer shots back because otherwise everything with a one. And it gives you more potential to make the five. Yeah, I think, I think if you hit, you bring two down. Uh, I see your logic of making the four point. Uh, hey, hey, Matt Congire, I make the four point. What does Matt know? He owes me a hundred bucks from Bazooki <laughs> that he lost to me the other day. How can you trust the guy that loses to me? <laughs> Ilja Tardine is in the house. Ilja from the Netherlands, as I recall. Matt Kongar, the genius. And when we were, by the way, when we were naming people that could play under two, we forgot, we forgot to mention him. He's the first person I ever saw play a match under one. Uh -huh. First year we had the dual duel in Texas. He, he made the four points. points. Hey, he hey, hey. To, does Matt have some kind of a, uh, electronic uh, connection with Mochi? We better check that. Is Mochi wearing headphones? I don't know. Matt's the first nope, person no I ever headphones. saw. I see no air ear pods in his ear yeah. either. Matt's the first person I ever saw play a nine-point match over a board. Then he went over to my computer and put in every single play of Cube decision. I've seen a few memory. do that, but Matt's certainly one of them. And, and uh, Stick's yeah. another. I can do that too, but I don't get the right positions. You, you rarely get it correct. No, I don't get anything correct, <laughs> but I can do it. Okay, 4-1. Okay. Uh, do you make the bar? What else? Do you step up? I don't think you step up. One, two, three, four, 15 pointing numbers. And and uh, gazillion 
hitting numbers. I well, if you step up, he's, he's probably going to. Of course, the bar doesn't have great a lot of great if value. Step up, does he cube you? Or he cube, cube you either way. Uh, I'm not sure he cubes you either way. I think if you make the bar, I don't know if you're going to get doubled. I guess you do. Yeah, I think you get doubled either way. I learned this the other day. Don't make a play where you don't know if you'll take or drop the cube. So I would make a really bad play here. So I drop for sure. Oh, he made the bar. I didn't like stepping up at all. And I, I would take this cube. He has a lot of market losers making the five point or an outside hit. Outside hit doesn't lose your market all the time because uh, Z would have some responses that are you now anchoring or coming in and hitting. Making the five, I think, would cost you your market pretty bad. No, ah, got two checkers back. So aside from the double five and the double six, you don't have... There's the double. Yeah. We thought it was coming. Tremendous number of market losers. So let's go with and Dirk. he takes. He takes. And it's, he... Well, what's he do? He, he makes runs. The, he make the uh, deuce. He I run. Ace. I run. You're running? 21-10. It's a valuable point Certainly out there. Certainly valuable. It stops the four or five, which he's obviously going to roll because the dice are fixed. Well, you you run and make that point, right. and he's going to attack you like with okay. wild abandon. Go ahead, but still right. Let's you, go for it. Huh? You're up in the race, and it's your best play. And <laughs> what's the guy going to do? Roll double threes? Come on, that ain't going to happen. Never happens to me. Matt said, "Make ace. Anything else is a blunder." So really, Matt and I were together. Really, so Mochi's got a blunder. And Z's got a blunder so far, according to our. Uh, and Peter Amir guy. agrees with the tempo hit. Or uh, no, he agrees with the hit, tempo hit. He said. Uh huh. But the double three was a great, great. Well, uh, it was a big joker. Big joker. But so here we go. So far, according to our our uh, experts online, they both made a blunder so far. That's not characteristic of these two players. Do you hit here? I think you do. What else are you going to do? Well, you can play safe. No, he did hit and was rewarded by getting time <laughs> for his back game. You know, oh, and then uh, dances. Yeah. This could get ugly. 6-3. You make the ace point. You go all out blitz here. I count 14 checkers in the zone. And you know how fast I can count the checkers in the zone? By counting the one that isn't. Is not the right. Zone. Right. Go. What you're, was it? you're smarter than you look. There was a, that's terribly spread. No, there was a line in the movie Out of Africa where the guy, uh, Robert Redford, was driving over a herd of elephants and he said there's about uh, 800,000 elephants there. And she said, how can you count them so fast? She says, I count their legs and divide by four. That was in the movie. <laughs> okay, now. Make the five. Make the five. Okay, he anchored. Which, yeah. I mean, he, he's not in the best of shape, but he's in a hell of a lot better shape having made that anchor. Yeah, but now you make the bar but and he, you give him fives. But he has no timing. Make the bar and give him fives instead of sixes. So you play 18, 17. Or do you play six? Now you've made my play. Good play. See how it worked? Now it's a crunch city. For ZZ. You bring both in to kill your sixes. He didn't. Why don't you bring both in to kill your sixes? What am I missing there? So he doesn't have to run with a one six. I, I don't understand that. And now he's rewarded by rolling a six and having to waste There's even more. Point. I have to understand that, but I, I'm sure it wasn't a big PR thing because chances aren't so good, but I would have killed sixes. Okay. I'm, I'm Did you clear the eight or the seven? Clear from the rear, make it clean. Easier mm -hmm. to bring home without leaving shots. But it's a better trap the other way. Yeah, but you're you don't you really trap with a two point board to block. He's got a three point board. You're not thinking gammons here. You're thinking about just taking the win. Yeah. Well, the gammons are gone. Yeah. So it's and pretty... and the wins are gone. So they're both just going to play it out. Yeah, I think people over trap and over shift sometimes. Overthink. Yeah, and I don't ever have that problem. I've noticed. I've noticed. <laughs> Even when I talk, it just comes right out. <laughs> my mother said, I only open my mouth to change feet. That's me. <laughs> We're having fun in the chat room. Matt says, running with the 6-5 was a sizable error, but not a blunder. 
and uh, Martin House says sizable error equals Japanese blunder. Yeah. Well, yeah, it depends on your blunder. Look at this. Blunder settings. Double threes. He won. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That we looked away. I didn't even see that coming. You, you looked away. and you Wow. Missed. Never look away. That's the, well, look, that's this the is a slight delay. Here it is. Four, one, five, four, four, two. Boom. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, uh, most interesting. Yeah, I think I guarantee you both players here care more about their PR than they do about points, especially Mochi, because that's his best chance of getting to qualify. Yeah, he's got like a one point lead in, in PR. Yeah, it's so going to be hard it, for him. It, it would be. That. Yeah. I mean, he'd have to have a couple of just explosive bad PRs, and he doesn't. He doesn't do that. Uh, yeah, I at your tournament in the semifinals against uh, L Lareo, uh from from Venezuela. Yeah, Ron Lareo. Lareo. He played a twenty-two PR uh, because Ron had two seconds on the clock. It was the semifinals, snake, yeah. and I know that because I played the winner. I played Ron and lost in the finals to Ron, and I was praying. For Mochi to win because I like Mochi, nothing he has run, but I wanted to beat Mochi in the finals. I, I wanted to lose the Mochi in the finals, not lose the Ron Lareo. It's a better story. But he played a 22 PR. His opening 6 1 was a double slot. I'll never forget that game. And Mochi played a 22 PR. Now he wouldn't do that in the dual duel and he wouldn't do that in the UBC, but it was great to watch. And Ron kept his cool and finished the match and won with three seconds on the clock. Ron's a great guy. Oh, I love the guy. I really respect him. He was him. in, uh, where was he at most recently? Where were we? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Ron was yeah, in Las Vegas. You look up that game. Mochi played that game at 22 PR intentionally. Can you imagine slotting with a double slotting with an opening 6 1? Only when your opponent's three, you got three seconds to go and you're way behind in the match. And he wasn't that far behind, as I recall. Okay, this is an interesting, uh, interesting position. Moji doubles. doubles. Two back there with a lot of blockage, but I, Z's in the air. I take because I'm not sure of the cube. That's my reason for taking. I'm not. I sure. would not at all be surprised to see him take this. Yeah, even I, even race. Are you sure it's a cube? That's the real question that I have. If you're not sure it's a cube, then it's a take. Matt, MCG says strong cube. That's what I said. It's a strong cube. <laughs> Amir says strong cube. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's a very strong cube because I'm not sure. More, you're take. getting more certain all the time. Aren't you? I'm going to shut up. You know what? <laughs> I wish those guys were here because they know what to say. They, they know the right thing to say. But I do make it more fun, don't I? You know, I, I, more I think variety. And, and it's great. You and I are a good commentating duo, if I say so myself. We have I fun to so, talk sure. to Sure. Talking to match, we're entertaining the people. Yeah, our, our viewership is soaring here. We're over three hundred now. Yeah, it's that. It's and it's all because of you and me. There's right? nothing to do with ZZ playing most yeah. games to the entertainment uh, value. Who are these guys playing? By the way, they came here to see <laughs> us, didn't they? Who are these guys? Oh, this is a nice role. You get out of there clean. What are you thinking about? That's it. Good. That was a a great sequence for yep. uh, for Mochi. And I. Like to leave that six because what if the, he rolls a three five? You get a double shot. There in. goes the the three point. Yeah. There goes the neighborhood. Yeah. How could you not double this? Oh, look at this crash. <laughs> crash. Has to how give up he, his six point. How can he take this cube? How can he take this cube? It's so silly. In retrospect, the one game rollout was a, was tough, and I wasn't sure it was a double. I didn't say it wasn't a double. I said I wasn't sure. And I should be sure because he did it. Is Mochi going to double when it's not a double? Hell no. If he doubles, it's probably a double. Why Why would I question that? Dummy. What a dumb guy. How can I question Mochi? Or is easy. Okay. Gammon's about... Uh, Gammon's yeah. is, is probably not going to get Gammon. My yeah, guess he is he came in off. on that first clearance yeah. of the six. My probably guess, saved him. I, yeah, now especially with double threes, that's 12 pips. He's going to get off. But we saw what happened last game. If, if ZZ wins this game, game I quit. That's it. That's it. How many times have I said I'll never play again if I've stopped saying that? Because I've, I've had a lie 17 times when I said I'll never play again if 
And then you're, wins, you're yeah. playing shit that night. Yeah. And sometimes I get interrupted on the if because he's already <laughs> rolled the double sixes the third time. Morton House says the take was a 207 blunder. So that's that's two big blunders by uh, wow by Z. He had the one earlier on a key recall. Wow, this is going to be very high PR for Z. Does it matter? He's got enough points. It doesn't now, matter. he's leader in points. It doesn't matter. So it probably doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe he knows that, and that's why he, uh, who knows? I've always had the theory that part of the reason you have a very low or a very high PR is you happen to be challenged with by the specific positions or not yeah some some matches are just simple easier than yeah. others yeah. And, and some are much more complicated anytime i have a very low pr you can go through the match and you can see i had very few tough decisions and every time i have a very high pr it means I, it's a normal match <laughs> and if <laughs> if there are a lot of difficult decisions oh god the pr is double digits plus huh <laughs> Not that often. I'm not quite that bad. Let's look. I made the 64 giant list. I can't be that bad. And I'm not going to let anybody forget it. Thank you again for those of you idiots who voted for me. I really appreciate the honor. I, I don't take it lightly. One of the sweetest things that's happened to me to be recognized that way. Okay, you have to slot. It's a duplication, fewer shots. 3 1. He did that so fast. Without any hesitation. Now, now, you hit or you make the pop? I'm hitting. I'm hitting. It's rarely wrong I'm, to hit. I am sure that I do one of those two. I either hit or cover. I, I don't know. The match is close. You know, if you hit, are you going to take the cue? If you cover, are you going to take the cue? I, I think that's the ask question you ask yourself in both cases. Which one am I, and even if he doesn't double, which one am I more likely to take the cue if he were to double? And uh, I don't know. So that didn't help me a bit. <laughs> I wish that had helped me. <laughs> well, I mean, Mochi's making the same considerations mm -hmm. and he hasn't decided yet either. So don't feel bad. If I hit and I'm doubled, I think I pass. So for that reason, I think I cover because I might take if I hit the cover. So that, that pushes me to cover. MCG says it's going to be a snap take if it's a cube. Either way. Either way. Okay, he hit, just like I said. I would have covered. And double, you know he gets double, double hit return. Yeah, double hit. I would have covered. I want to look at that play. That might be the first one I've gotten wrong the entire week. No. And if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anchor and make it a good outside point. Hope he doesn't roll a one, which is kind of duplicated anyway. Three, two. I come down. You don't, I don't like coming up here. I don't like anything. I guess you go to the eight. Mm -hmm. I don't like coming. I don't like to play to the I 21. Like I'm surprised by that a little bit. You go out to the bar. You hit on the ace. Yeah, hitting on the ace wasn't in my list. I hadn't gotten there yet. I hadn't reached down that. I'll, I hadn't reached I'll, down that far. I'll always defer to Mochi, but that one surprised me a little bit. Well, what do the boys say about hitting on the ace? Anybody else catch that play? MCG Amir experts, would you would you hit on the ace there? Let us hear from you. This is a good outside hit. Beautiful shot. And rewarded. You almost want to get rid of that checker on the ace point. I, I sort of like it when I get hit. hit it, and he's going to have to, I think, tidy up that blot in the outfield over there. How do you tidy it up? Well, he's going to hit it and then move to the 13. Mm. He stepped up with it. No, I think he'd rather step up and have what we call connectivity that's a thing Con connectivity is a thing now i'm with joe bernaba here who is the son of tony bernaba and a great player in his own right yeah lebanese he says he doesn't think either one of them is going to be pleased with their pr and i the agree we, we if if amir and matt Gongaier know what they're talking about and i 
uh, that there's all these blunders. We'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And, so now the question is, that are either one of them going to play under four <laughs> with all those blunders that we're talking about? Not like either one of them. They have oh, blunders. Man. He's going to have to hit. Of course. He can't split the, he can't come off the five. No. No, he could go to the two point, but why would you do that? No, you got to hit. I think so. With the blot, with the chance to make a second anchor. Yeah. Uh, the hit was. And that's a that's a nasty. Uh, well, it just means he's breaking his back, the back of the prime. No, he might make the four point here. Might make the four. He's point. making the three and the four. Yeah, he does. Covers, I covers, and out. out. No way. That's my play. No, okay. you cover. You can't come out there. The run. Up, up, and make. Yep, that's a good roll. Now you hope you roll that six or two. Hey, six. Very helpful for his easy. Uh-oh. Now, two point. Yeah. cube action, cube action. Didn't even stop to think about it. I guess me way off. But, you know, again, this is a, a typical mochi match, too, in the sense of three, two, seven point match. He's a minute and seven seconds already. Yeah. Well, they're both down. They're both down. Oh, no, he's got almost two minutes. But... Mochi has used a lot of time. This is a bad 3-1. Look at this. Well, it's just forced. You break the eight point. That's forced. Deuces. I make the ace point here. Yeah. Make the seven, seven and the ace. And the ace. Try and have seven. Well, he's seven got a, he's got to play. Right? So you, there's some bad rolls for him here. So so much for our theory. He didn't two do out. the two seven and the ace. I leave one. I ace save and a four. Yep, you yeah. save a six. Even with the one blotted side, I play safe here. I, don't I play know. safe. Yeah. Button it up. You can't. I don't you know. can't afford to get. I don't hit. know. I don't know. You might be putting a spare on your four point. So, might be attractive. Something to be said for that, but I'm tempted to button it up. I would button it up too as my initial. But look at that. We didn't talk about that. Left them both further back. And it's a lot of point that you want to make because he's not likely to come out even with a six. Now you cover, and I don't. Oh no, Phil. Cover and leave an eight. I'm, I'm Five, still... three, six, two. Oh no, he leave he didn't cover. You're right. He wouldn't leave the eight. He can bring that save. And he's ahead by what seven pips after. Still not enough to cue. We gotta see what oh. look at how he leaves that guy out there. That was really smart. I know that. Well, you're breaking so now, the board or you're running out. I'm oh, running geez. all the way. Mochi, uh, I'm running all the way. Doesn't have he has two options and neither are terribly attracted. No, I'm I'm coming out all the way. That's his. That's the play. You don't want to give up this race. You don't want to give up your board. I'd rather give him the four shot. I think this is a lovely double because you got a lot of market losers. It's an easy take. It's a hit of the blot. It's a hit and pray. Gets mm. away with it. Comes in. I think it was a very good double and a very and a pretty obvious take. Uh oh. Uh oh. Not likely gammons, but there's a, a freak a freak out there every now and then. I don't think you would call it a freak to gammon this. There's there's a reasonable number of gammons. Dances a couple times here. You're you're in the twenties. And now okay. that you're not. Not anymore. He had to dance one or two more times. Okay, ZZ is going to take the lead. Three away, four away. And I discussed this on an earlier match where we had the score. The most interesting thing I find about three away, four away is if you're the leader and you double, your recube take point is 40%. So you have to be very careful about doubling when you're the leader at the score. And when it's three away, four away, if you're the trailer, you wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind being a two-way, four-way. It isn't that terrible to be a two-way, four-way. Kind of a fun place to be if you're losing. Ooh, hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. hit on the outside. Hit on the outside. I, I wouldn't make the ace point. I wouldn't make the ace point. Well, maybe the score. Yeah, you know, he does. He does. That's not a play I would have made. 
It's an ugly play. Yeah, but he's look. He's looking for any opportunity to send a cube. He wants. He wants to have some gammon chances. That's right. That's where because he has a very efficient gammon at the cubus turn. You win the match. The gammon value goes up to one point oh. Now this five is going to be interesting. Yeah. And your opponent's gammon values go down yeah. during the cube turns. So you're really looking to get into gammonish situations here. The score really changes lots of checker plays and of course the cube action in ways that takes a nice, long time to nice lay a shake on that double yeah, five. That was great. Ah, so again. Two one hit two. Oh, he had to come in. That's right. Double fours. Wow. Hmm. What do you do? You come in. Yeah. That's the only part I'm sure of. You come in. in you're, fact, you're sure of the force I'm play, right? Sure, you come in. Two point is so ugly. I would have had problem. I would have had problem doing that. Probably, probably forced. Mochi still. Trying to flirt his way into a cube here. He's just looking for any opportunity. And his opportunity may be beckoning soon. I think it is. I think I'm cubing here. He does. Good. Yeah. The question is, do you take? That's the question. See, he's got three checkers on his deuce point. That's a very bad feature of the position. Yep. And he Let's passes. Go. So, yeah. uh, all right. Three away, three away. Three point match. Three point match. I start out every every match. What's the gamma value? What's the take point? The live cube take point at three away, three away is 25%. The recube take point at three away, three away is 25%. The gamma value, if you turn the cube, is 0.5. So I have that all set in my head before I start the match. And then I have no idea what to do. But it's anchor, nice to know the numbers. Anchor. Even if you don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. You one point. Oh, yeah. It's an anchor. Okay, now, Lee. Two down. Two down. Automatic. Dance. Dance. Double. Ooh. Double, maybe. 25% uh, take point. Or he's nine. He, oh, he's nine pips. No, you don't. He, I don't think he can double. I don't think he can double this. It's an easy take. He does double it. And he's easy take. And make the five points. Dancing. I'm not sure I double that one. Uh oh. Do you this, make, is, this is getting uh do you make two inside points? I make two inside points. This I don't, is, I don't uh, know. I don't know. Getting those back checkers around and getting more builders. I would have certainly made two inside points. Uh oh. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I wouldn't he start. can't roll another one. Well, he could roll another one. Ooh, he's starting to get a little stuck there. Ooh. What a joker. Baby. That's good, that was huge. Goodbye, Gamut. Yeah, huge. His, his match equity just went way up. Wow. Our point. Yeah. What else? Is no there? option. Eight. It's hit. Oh, oh hey. hit. Wow. Man. Now he's got to have another deuce. He could get G'd easily here. Five out and keep going. He did. Four one. Make the point. Make the eight point. Yep, there's a dude's got to come out. Oh, I come out as automatic. You, you can't give him 27 numbers that hit you. A little bit more than that. Plus shifts. You just hope to like double twos. Hope to escape yeah. without getting G'd here. Absolutely. Why? Why is he thinking? Why is that not knee jerk out? Because you don't do knee jerk if you're as smart as he is. I guess that's why. Seems so automatic. He stayed in. Wow. And he, doesn't, and he doesn't get hit. I don't understand that. I got to look at that. Guys, was that right to stay? Please help me here. I didn't think it was close. You get gammon too much by staying. How do you, And you don't win that much, not with that lousy board there. How could that be right? Well, ZZ did it. How could it be wrong? Any comments? Uh, out for me by Amir. Got to be bad, says Thomas uh, Hansen. How do you not come 18, out there? 18, Joe Bernaba. Everybody says. And now, I mean, he's not even. Uh, 
He's going to run off of it, probably. Eight, but still. 12, 13. It's close. I don't see, I don't understand that play. I mean, lots of times when I see a master make a play that I don't understand, I can look at it and sort of figure it out. This one I can't. I can't even sort of figure out the logic. I don't think you win enough by staying and you get gammon too much. I don't know. All right, he's going to get off this gammon because of that beautiful double five. Okay, so. And then we're going to see three away, one away Crawford. And most people, good players, know that it's that's a DMP game where it doesn't matter either way about gammons very much. It's just the free drop again. So you play it like DMP. And Stick taught me long ago, Stick, I think, was the master of DMP for a while. I don't know if he still is because he's not playing as much backgammon. But he taught me that you know you really have to master DMP first, and uh, so he played played it for hours and hours and was willing to play anybody DMP for any amount of money. Probably still would. Okay, so here we go. Good practice. Now both these guys can play with no time in effect. Yeah, they thirty nine. They have lots of time. They have lots of time for these guys. You hit and come down. The reason you come down is you've stripped your eight points, so you need that two to cover. Whoa. Kind of dance. And this is a uh, Crawford game. So are you making nope. the four point or are you making the bar? Made the bar. Split. Okay. Is it a race? You just want to race and that helps you bring it home. Very beautiful, beautiful Great roll for roll. Mochi. Eight to 18. Yeah. Remember, we were thinking Mochi might move out of the. PR battle and get into the points battle, but I don't think so after this. Because, uh, well, he, he's got to win. He might, he's he got to win, win eight PR. point, very likely. Yeah, he might win two points here. He might win well, two that's points. Right. This could be, he, he may have outplayed, he probably did outplay Z this time. Yeah, that uh, GL looked at that staying back with on that ace point that time was a one, 17800. So he's, he's had at least three approaching 200 blunders. Yeah, this is not a characteristic game for ZZ. Here's a hit. Which one? I'm not, I wasn't sure which one, but I knew you were, I was any one of them. In and out? No, in and clear. Making or hitting? In and out. Hit and pray. Hit and continue. Dupe the got, ones. Yeah, yeah you dupe the ones. Go. In and out he's again. Got in and out. Of in and out again. Now hit he and hits cover. To make the ace. Yeah, hit and cover. My favorite combination. In and hit doesn't work. Ooh, big miss here. Big miss. Big miss. A swing and a miss. Yeah, if Mochi can win two points here and then win one or two more points, and somebody else doesn't do that well ahead of him, he could go into the point race. Opening the door for the PR race for cuts for two other people. Very complex here, how this is going to work. Yeah, if Mochi would, if qualifies on points, like you say, that makes uh, Olsen yeah. and uh, Ali looking pretty good yeah. on them. Of course, the strategy PR for the players doesn't change. Every time you sit down, you are trying to play your best and hope you win. That's that's going to be the exact strategy no matter what else is going on on the sheets. But for us spectators, we're seeing a lot of interesting uh, nuances this as far as a, what happens. This was a very interesting and in, and entertaining match, I think. Well, I think you're very entertaining. But the players, I, I, I'm almost a little sorry. I'm almost a little embarrassed. Both of them are so much capable of playing so much better. Of course, when they come up with 1.2 PRs, we're going to look stupid, aren't we? <laughs> I believe that those blenders were... Joe Bernaba, after 11 rounds... Uh, Mark Olson was the the second PR qualifier. Well, you know what? You just reminded me. Tony Benaba is another player that could have been been playing that. He, he's yeah. he's a superstar also that could have been here. <clears throat> I'm yeah, sure but, I missed but Mark uh, again after 11 rounds. Mark was at what was it? 3.38 average PR, and Ali from Turkey was at 3.40. So it's extremely close. Yeah. 
And this is Ollie from Although Turkey. Although Matt and or uh, Mark in round fourteen had a one hundred and five, so uh, so you and I, you and I hit, were really off on the PRs in this game. Let's see, we'll, I, I we'll know right away. I suspect so. <laughs> how far we're off? Okay, let's take a look. Twenty-eight viewers. We thank all of y'all for uh, for tuning in. Look at it there. Oh, 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 baby. Well, how about those blunders of mochis we were talking about? Look at that. And with all, with we thought that we had three blunders by Z, he still played four point two, which is not terrible uh, for him. It's terrible. We okay. would take it. Right? For him, no, we would. For him, that's a bad PR. But look at Mochi. Oh my God! Five, four. Didn't we say he had a big, big blunder on one of the cubes? I don't know. Oh my God! So, uh, wow! Nice match by Mochi. Oh my God! Picks Mochi. up two points, so he's going to be right up there in the in the hunt on both points and PR. There's a reason that he is the number one giant and has been for many years. Here's a match where it almost didn't matter. He's going to be in the finals no matter what. It doesn't matter, and he's still playing at 1.5. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it to you. I've got to go down and uh, process the round 12 matches and enter them into the results. Okay, uh, good they, work. They should be run by we, now. We need so. that work done. Our next match will be Justin and Ernst. Followed by Michi and Dirk. Uh, so we've got two great matches coming up. The reason we've got Justin and Erst on this list uh, is they're not necessarily the superstars, but they're both, uh, when we made this list, on the cusp of getting into the final eight. And they hadn't been streamed that much, and I want to show them. Uh, so that's, that was our decision. Again, the schedule for tomorrow. We will not be streaming until 9 o'clock at night. Why? Uh, and we'll have two matches of the final eight. They'll be playing on live boards. Uh, and we'll play two of the matches. And each player plays his opponent up to four matches until somebody gains five points. You get one point for winning the match, one point for PR. Once you hit five, you're an automatic winner, so they might not necessarily play all four matches. Uh, just, just Mochi just continues to think impress. It works. And I'm going to just look at something a second on the analysis. There were some blunders.
and Justin is uh, just recently moving to um, London. We moved to London. He married a lovely lady in London who's a doctor, and he's going to pursue his backgammon career from London by teaching and playing. He's a very fine teacher and player and just a fun guy to have in the shoe at. He and I play often in New York and elsewhere. He's playing uh, Ernst Kuhlman from Switzerland, and that's all I know. I know nothing more, and uh, he didn't fill out the questionnaire that I had sent out. Maybe we didn't have his email address. Maybe it's my fault, but I really don't know Ernst at all. Uh, but I know that he's doing pretty well, and he has a shot. I think he still has a shot. I'd have to look at the sheets to be sure. But uh, he has to be a very good player just to qualify to play in this tournament. It's an honor just to be here as a player. And, of course, I'm very honored to be here as a commentator. And I will be your commentator along with Nick Mayer in uh, Monte Carlo. I'll be doing the finals with Nick, and I'll be doing a lot of the major matches. Nick will be doing some of them with me and, and alone, and we'll have some other guest commentators join us, as we always do. Um, and it's interesting, the other day somebody said, how did you get into commentating? I had to think about it. And it was Falafel and Matt Cohn Geyer who were doing the finals in Monte Carlo and invited me to join them because I was pretty fast on XG. They didn't they didn't want me to join because of my expertise or my personality. They wanted me to join because I had a laptop and I was pretty fast at putting positions in so we could talk about it and we could stop Falafel from making silly bets. And it uh, didn't work. He still made silly bets. And I started chiming in and they started asking uh, not just what XG was, but I started throwing out my opinion and they liked me. So that's how I started doing a lot of commentary in Monte Carlo. And then as more and more places had commentary, I was invited. And here I am doing it full time uh, for the UBC and for the world championships and at other tournaments. I'm often doing commentary and it's because I like it. It's fun. It's a great, it's to, to me, a, a great exercise to do it. Uh, I'd rather be playing in the finals than commentating the finals, but most of the time I'm there as the commentator. Once in a while, I'll make it to the finals, though. And then all I do is hold my breath and pray that Carter's not my commentator. Not, not that he's a bad commentator. He's great, but I know the kind of shtick he's going to give me. All right. I don't know how soon the next match is, but it, hang tight. It should be fairly soon. And if anybody on the stream knows Ernst uh, or from Switzerland, I'd like to know more about him. I have the next match on the ticker stream. Hmm, I'm trying to find out the time of the next match, and I don't see it on the ticker stream, but I know it's coming up soon. Or are we taking a break for dinner? Ah, stream on on the ticker stream. That's what the ticker stream is. Okay, round five, 15. This is the next to last round at 1800 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So it's tomorrow morning. It, is it a.m. or p.m.? Uh-oh, it says a.m. I think it's p.m. I don't think we're done. He'll correct it if it's p.m., I'm sure. Huh. Well, we're all looking at the same ticker that says that the next match is at 1800 a.m. So isn't that 6 a.m.? Hmm. 12 plus 6 equals 1800? No, that would be 6 p.m. Now they changed it. The AM was wrong. Okay, now I got it. Okay, that's 10 minutes from now. <laughs> that's more like it. They had me going because it, it said AM. And uh, I don't know. I can't tell you what day it is, or I'm getting confused on the month. So hang on. A few minutes, we'll start the match with 
with Ernst and Justin. I'm going to mute my microphone for a minute while we take.
Mm -hmm. Hi there, we're back and getting ready for our next match. Uh, of Justin and Ernst, uh, two very good, fine players. Justin got off to a really bad start. and was, He was actually depressed when I had dinner with him uh, last night. And uh, uh, it was lunch with him yesterday. He was depressed. And he started coming back strong. He faded a little bit back and forth. Ernst, I really don't know Ernst's game or much about him. Uh, I sent out a questionnaire and I didn't get one from him. And I'm not blaming him. It may have been our fault. It may not have reached him. Uh, but he's from Switzerland. I've had students in Switzerland. They have a great uh, group there. Say hello to, is there a fellow named Grandstead that plays the game decently? I think he's decent. Three times, is he the, I think he's the only three-time world champion. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. He's the only three-time world champion. I was doing the commentating on his match, match when he beat my, my really close friend, Joe Russell. I was happy for Jorgen and sad for Joe, uh, but Jorgen is just a great guy, just an amazing guy. Looks like they're getting set. Uh, Wilcox had sent me a couple questions. How can they possibly do it this fast? And is there enough time and enough rest? And the answer is yes, because these matches with that one, uh, with one point per uh, one minute per point instead of two, these matches mostly end pretty fast. There's plenty of time, and you get a little rest in between. And not having to count pips, you can't believe how, how much strain that takes off of your playing. And the, the players don't seem that horribly fatigued or out of it. Although Dirk did complain a little bit to me. He was never used to being in front of the computer that long. He felt that was new to him. and certainly hasn't hurt his game. If you look at his PR and his results, uh, he's got nothing to complain about. I'm sure Dirk has spent hours and hours at poker tables, but that's live play. That's different. I know he's got stamina because I was with him in, in, in the Bahamas and I was with him in, in Istanbul where we were up all night playing shoeettes, playing tournaments. The guy's got great stamina, but it is different when you're playing over a computer. It's a different feeling. And Dirk wasn't used to that. Well, they faked left and went right. The players were getting ready to sit down and then they walked away. That's a good question. Uh, have you considered back M and Galaxy considering to move the stream to Twitch to get a bigger audience? I think we that's a great thought. Why not do both? Why not do YouTube and Twitch? Bigger audience, the better. That's what this is all about. And that's one of the reasons I'm here. That's why they don't have an intelligent commentator. They want somebody that's a little bit more entertaining, that explains the game a little bit more. You experts don't need me to tell you what the match take points are, the gammon values, and what happens different at this match. And I know you're probably bored with hearing me say it, but I wanted to make this more understandable for the general audience uh, and for intermediate and lower players as well. So I recommend to you open players that if you're a little tired of hearing my explaining things, uh, turn off the sound and just watch the match and make have, do your own commentary. Uh, because, uh, again... If they wanted somebody intelligent, they wouldn't have hired me. I'm not that dumb. I'm okay. All right. Justin Nolan, and Ernst Kuhlman. Mm -hmm. Two young, handsome men. To me, they're both very young. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll finish. Ready soon. Right. I'm just waiting for the feed, and Tara is here to help me. It's nice to have four hands instead of two. I guess there's places where it's really nice to have four hands instead of two. I had a massage the other day here. It was unbelievable. And I don't want to tell you what I paid. I'm embarrassed it was so cheap. I almost tipped her it was so cheap. It was a great massage. I'm going to do that again tomorrow. And I'm playing speed gambling tomorrow. They're going to let me play with the masters. Oh, I can't wait. I'll show them how you can play fast. I might be the fastest player in the world. 
uh, especially if you don't care about PR. All right. Again, I don't know Ernst. I'm buddies with Joel. I'm Justin Noel. I'm yeah. I, I just combined Justin and Noel to Joel. That's it's because it's getting late, guys. I've been doing this now for two straight days. It's amazing. I still have a voice. I'm drinking lots of water and coffee. I've been advised to keep that throat wet. <clears throat> Not my favorite way to keep it wet, but I'm doing my best. Ha, grants that is Swedish. What difference does it make? Swedish, Switzerland. What difference does that make? It's the same thing. <laughs> Can't believe I made that mistake. I know that too. Swedish players, Tedlin and Grandstead, a bunch of other great Swedish players. There's no great Swiss players, though, are there? Who's the best? Oh, Federer. Federer's pretty good. All right, we're 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 alive. VYE 36. That's got to be Ernst on top because we know that uh, shot by Justin is at the bottom. And uh, we're ready. I'm ready for Justin to log in and play. Come and get me, baby. Let's watch this match. Here we go. Let's go. And look, look at the online rating for Earth 1509. Obviously, he does not play on back M and Galaxy, except for this tournament. Not with a rating like that. I, I had that rating the first match I played. And then I got back up there again a couple times. 4-2. Make the four point. Hitting point. These are easy. This is not so easy. I come in on the two and come down with the five. Isn't it too rich to come in on the 20? I think so. I think it's a little rich. I think you come in on the 23 and play 13 8. Come in on the 20. There's one, two, three. Oh, I'm wrong. Do it now. Big split. This is the big split. Anybody, was that right? Love to see your comments. Would you come in on the 20 or the 23 there? You're giving him a, a thought about the cube here. I, I think this has this got to be a little early on the cube. Come on, guys. I want to know what's right there on that 5-2 coming in. He does double. I thought this was a little early. He grabs it, and I would have grabbed it, too. Five points. A no-brainer. This is a great entry coming in and hitting. Again, coming in and hitting. What's the hesitation here? How do you not come in and hit? And he did. Come in and hit. Keep doing it, baby. <clears throat> huh. You put a second one up? I do. I hit. And he did. He doesn't have enough checkers in the zone for a great blitz, but you didn't want to make him make the high anchor, so you cover. And uh, starting to look like a pretty good cube. I wasn't sure at the time it was a cube. I was sure of the take. Ooh, double six. Bar point is very, very big here. Making a five prime with your opponent on the ace. Not at the edge of the prime. That's really big. You got to come out. You don't want to get stuck there. And I think you come into the six. You do. Ah, I make the 23 point here. And he did. You don't hit. He did it quickly. I like that play a lot. Even though Justin made it, I like that play. Not much to think about here. You certainly don't come off your anchor, so what do you do? You go to the two point. 13 to two. 
do I? I don't see a good alternative. Do you hit with that blot? I don't know. I don't know. Justin's position is so stripped, it might be right not to hit and let him roll and start breaking stuff. And uh, Ernst agreed with me. I just play quietly and bring it in. I'm still not hitting. I could be wrong, but I don't see the reason to hit here. And he hit, so I must be wrong. More gammas? I didn't like that hit. I like this hit on the outside, though. I would hit off the 13. Pretty sure that's got to be right. Why are we taking so long on this play? Because you can cover the ace and split. I hope he doesn't roll a two. But he's got a whole bunch of twos that hurt. I think you just hit on the 13. <clears throat> this must be a harder play than I thought. This is why I play speed gammon. I'd be hitting, boom, over, done. Next. I oh, did it. Okay, good. Must be right, because that was my play. Now he can cover. He can cover with the eight now. I wouldn't mind that play. Yep. <clears throat> Come on out. The water's fine. Again, this is not the last match of the night. Our next match after this is going to be a fellow named Michi and a fellow named Dirk. Should be a Lulu. We haven't seen Michi stream that much, and it's not because he's not great. It's just he didn't seem to have very many matches that were really interesting or against really great players. Some of the better players are all great players, but not some of the more favorites. So that's why we haven't seen Michi too much. But if you look at this records, that's that's maybe part of the reason he had a good draw. He didn't draw Mochi and Dirk. Well, he drew Dirk right here. So, but so far, that's he's got a lot of points because because he's great. That's why he's got a lot of points. All right, you have to take two off and not leave a shot. And you usually come out with the five and maybe slot the bar. That's my play anyway. Come out because you may have to be running. Oh, you didn't come out. Hmm. You didn't slot the bar. Neither, neither one. This plays itself, both to the ace. It's ugly, but what else are you going to do? Isn't this forced? Come on, both to the ace. Do you split with the two? I think so. Yeah, there's a lot of double shots by doing that. For example, when he rolls a four one, he's got a hit and he's got a hit and then something. So the least shots, you're thinking about two things. What leaves the least shots and what leaves the fewest returns if you don't get hit? And uh, the answer to that, I think, is both off the 20. I'm pretty sure it's both off the 20. There's no reason why you would play six to one without hitting. So you're hitting. So I, so what I'm doing is I'm moving, I'm hitting him off my four point and then deciding whether to take the checker off or not. He made my play and uh, he richly rewarded for it if he doesn't leave a return shot and he does not leave a return shot, just lifts. Nothing, nothing here to get cute, just lift. 21 to 24 on your numbering system is, but it's really the four point to the one point. Double fours. This might help him get off the gamut. Can't hurt. All right. Do you, uh, yep, you come on. Uh oh. That's game. Four nothing. 
Good start for Justin. I didn't see anything really there I didn't like. That means they must have played terribly. <laughs> Am I too self-deprecating? Uh, actually, I'm not most of the time. As most my friends that know me that know that I, I, I've got a, I've got an ego like everybody else. But when I'm amongst these kinds, these giants and these grandmasters, I just feel so in awe of their games. I have very little confidence in my own compared to them. And even though I probably play pretty well, but I'm not in their league. They're just that good. Okay. He doesn't split. I find that interesting. I would have split there. I guess you don't split into stacks where you can get pounded. I guess that's the theory. And he's getting pounded. He's got a beautiful five prime now. The question is, do you come up? You come up with a two and you do. And now do you make the nine point? I think you do. Or do you make the four point? I'm voting for the, oh my gosh, this is not that easy. He made the nine point. That was my play. I'd rather have a five prime with him not at the edge than a five prime with him at the edge. But he just got to the edge. No, he doesn't. The dupe, one is duped. That's the other reason why you make the nine point. And now it's Crash City. Too good to double. Just roll. See what happens. Don't double. It's a huge drop. I don't think you can have a market gainer on the next roll where you're in a situation very often where your opponent could take the cube. And that's a reason to play on. Now it just changed. <laughs> now it just changed. Yeah, maybe there is market gainer. You might crash. It's a nice priming play he just made. I like Justin's play there a lot because uh, he'll never get hit, really. This plays itself. You hit and bring another builder in. Now it's still way too good. Uh, that's uh, I guess you make the two point. You would you were hoping to make the three point, but you got to make the two. What else can you do? Is he thinking about slotting the three? And no, he didn't. Okay, great roll, great roll. Now there's some hope. <clears throat> well, now there's a six, six prime, it's a seven prime, longest prime in the history of the game. Ah, that was the beauty. That's what you know. The only thing that could have hurt him is if he crashes. <clears throat> so he's justified, justified. I like the way he played this game. Sometimes it takes guts not to double. People say about you got to have guts to use the cube. Sometimes you have to take some chances not to double because you might be too good, even though you might lose it. You have to weigh risk and reward, the odds of losing versus the odds of winning gammons. But also there is that market gainer theory you have to keep in mind. If there's no way your opponent is going to have a take on the next roll, even if gammons are small, you can keep playing for gammons. Crash City, population, Justin. Wow, there's a really big air show going on. I hope if you can hear the sound of the jets, it's really something. They're beautiful to watch. I'm on the 14th floor with a lot of windows, and I can see the jets, and they're flying close to each other and almost look like a dogfight. I just hope they're ours. Okay. Do you play for the crack or do you bring them all in? You play for the crack and you don't get a crack. Now, do you take them all off the six? Right, because you kill your fives. And now... You're maybe sorry you brought a, made that play. You didn't crack. Now you leave a shot and lose. Yep. See, the worst happened, he's still okay. Even if he hadn't come in there, Justin's got to roll two more sixes. No sweat. This can't, can't lose. 
Justin's got this in, in the bag, right? Unless Ernst comes in, Justin had it in the bag, and then Justin went ahead and rolled two sixes also. Well, you know, he's still got some game here, but you're going to hit loose. If you don't roll an 11, you're hitting loose with everything. You just can't let him go. You don't hit loose. I was wrong. You make the point. <laughs> Again, too good to double. And winning three away, seven away, you're happy to win an undouble gammon to get to Crawford. Crawford means that when you're one away from winning, you neither opponent can double for one game. Otherwise, if we didn't have the Crawford rule, by I think it was developed by John Crawford, who was also a, a famous bridge player. Uh, if you didn't uh, have that rule, then as soon as the guy gets to six and a match to seven, you're going to double on the first roll. Not that big an advantage to get to six then, because you can't recube either. Gammon's looking high, very, very likable, probable. Hmm. Now, is there a double that gets him off? Yeah, double sixes will get him off. Will double fives get him off? That's what he's looking at. Can he get to double fives? Or three. Yeah. If he plays the back checker all the way, double fives will get him off. And that's what he did. Now double fives and double sixes. So he gave himself, he thought about it. It's only one more roll, which is 2.778%. But he still wanted to make sure he got in that one more roll because it affects your PR. And by the way, sometimes you roll it. Sometimes you gives you a win or he stives you a gammon. That would have been big not to get gammon there. Okay, we talked about this before. Again, at Crawford, do gammons matter or not? So they don't matter very much. It really doesn't hurt help uh, Justin that much to win a gammon, and it doesn't hurt Ernst that much to lose a gammon because all it does is take away his free drop, basically. So you play double match point. You play just to win the game, which means generally you race. And if you're losing the race, then you go all out and hit and play a back game or whatever, because you don't care about getting gammon. I love playing these kind of scores, DMP games, because I love back games. And I particularly love back games, and it doesn't matter if I get gammon. I can stay back longer. I can get more checkers hit. I can play more cavalierly. I can play my Pasco gammon game. For those of you who don't know, it's a game I invented and named after Jim Pasco in honor of my good friend Jim, who I think is one of the best prop and back game players there are, there is, there there be. And uh, it's a lot of back game play, and it's really fun. But it's also helped my back game play. And it's very important. And people say, well, you don't get into back games that much. You don't, but you do get into them at DMP and at critical times. And usually if it's DMP, that means it's important. And you can steer the game. Anybody who's played Chouette with me knows how much I steer the game. Take and give cubes more in back games. How big do you play this? Pretty big. That's about as big as you can play it. Comes in and hits, of course, automatic. And comes in and hits, automatic. Comes in and doesn't hit, automatic. Do you lift? I think so. There's no reason to get hit again. Now, this is a little tricky. This is a tricky play. Leaving the double shot because you don't want to leave it on the 20 point and have them hit you loose there and maybe make that point. But you're giving them double shots to the other side. I would have thought a little bit longer about that, see if there's some way to duplicate something before I would just play. And he's not that short a time. So, well, he is down to two minutes, but... This could be the last game. Well, you can make a beautiful eight point here.
And ugly roll. My theory is there's no ugly rolls, there's just ugly rollers. Okay. I don't think you hit. I think you just go all the way and hope. You slot the bar. He's, he, that's what he did. Now you're racing. Now you're missing. Slot a point. Slot at least one point, maybe two. For hopefully for making the board for future use. Where is the race? You always wonder when the double six. You're way down in the race, so that's why. A lot of players uh, who aren't so good and don't count pips would immediately just run those back checkers. And uh, he's down 30 pips, some pips in the race after he runs. All you're doing is giving up when you do that. And a double match point game is no matter. So you absolutely have to stay there. Hope for a shot. That is your game plan to get that shot. I have lost my feed. I'm sorry uh, for what's going on here. Should be on my Zoom. I, we have a little technical problem here. I hope I haven't screwed this up somehow. But I need some help. Like you can find Tara or Bill. I've lost the feed, and I hope it doesn't destroy the...
back in the galaxy back up. I got the wrong match in here, so I got to do this again. It's results match. So I have to get the match number for the current match. Uh, and that's on the I don't oh passcode. There we go. Um, seven six two two four. Enter. I'm just getting circles going around. Let me try and refresh it. Play dot back in the galaxy dot com match nine seven six two two four. I'm not getting in. I don't need the link anymore. Well, I'm sorry about some technical difficulties here. The match is completed and we missed it. I'm sorry. But look at uh, Justin. Played under three. That's very nice. Ernst, 6.3. Not too nice for his level of play. I'm sure he's not happy with that. And Justin knows he can do better than three also, but... There's nothing to be wrong with playing under three PR. In this crowd, it's just another match. But in real life, looking at the back end of communities, should be very, very proud of playing at that level. Um, okay, so we missed that match. I certainly hope we have everything sorted out for the next match. Okay, we're streaming now. Somebody else signed into my account, and I have a feeling I know who it is. I have one of my teachers that uses it occasionally. I just sent him a text saying, stay the hell away from my Zoom account. So we're using my Zoom account, and it got messed up. I'm very sorry for the glitch. I think that's the first major glitch that we've had uh, this whole time, and I'm going to blame Wilson because he's in charge of everything. In fact, I'm going to credit Wilson for doing a great job. If that's the first major glitch and it wasn't his fault, uh, I think that's saying a lot for the technological skills. And of course, we he had a lot of help from Tara and uh, Hussein and Bill Riles, but not from me. From the technical standpoint, I'm, I'm just here to talk. But uh, we'll have the next match ready. And again, it's going to be an exciting match with Michi and Dirk coming up soon. Uh, I think you'll see on your monitor how soon. My guess is it's scheduled for 25 minutes from now because this last match was fast, but maybe they'll get done sooner. Um, and I don't have much to say about the last match because we got cut off at the end, but um, at seven to nothing, part of the reason that I think in, in, in Earth's uh, defense, when you're winning, your PRs are going to be worse than when you're losing and i found that if you look at everybody's if you take two even players every time the loser loses and every time the winner who wins you, and you compare the prs usually the loser has a lower pr he used to have a much lower er because er didn't work very well in our opinion because when you danced on the bar it improved your pr and the loser would dance on the bar more so actually i may be wrong now that we have pr it might not matter because your pr is your how you played per move uh, for the number of moves that were, you had a decision to make. If you had a move that was forced, it had no effect on your PR, such as dancing on the bar. So with PR, in the old days with Snowy, with ER, when you had an uh, error rating, you could actually, you might have a six PR and you might dance on the, on the bar six times in a row and your PR goes down to five. With PR, that doesn't happen. So 
I guess that's not a factor here, but it's interesting that it's no longer a factor. This is one of the many improvements of XG, I think. And XG is not through being improved. It's going to get better and better. Just give it time. You have to be patient. Uh, Tara, thank you for coming by. I and I we crashed a minute ago, but somebody tried to log in my account, and I know I know who it was that texted him, and we we lost the end of the last match. But we're back in business, waiting for the next and final match of the day. Okay. How are we doing on the on the uh, updates? We're on thirteen now. Thirteen is running. It's been updated to twelve. Been updated yeah. to twelve. So you think if the last match will be finished, let's say an hour from now. You'll think you'll you should have the finals in about two weeks. <laughs> oh no, it's not going to take any more. They'll than be the done. Finals, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half or so. So check back on the Facebook site or on the website, and you'll see exactly who the final eight are going to be. Again, the first round of the final, first two rounds of the final eight will be tomorrow night at nine o'clock Istanbul time, which is reasonable and normal time for my friends in the United States. I think the difference is seven hours. So. Uh, What's nine less seven? Uh, be about two o'clock yeah, in the yeah, afternoon, okay. your time. And uh, I'm still trying to adjust to the jet lag. I That's why I was up at 1.30 last night with Mate. And after he left, I was still up sending out emails and doing some stuff. And I had a student that texted me, oh, you got time for a lesson? <laughs> oh, with Jeff and... And, uh, and Ernst. How'd they go? Ernst one seven zero. Justin played just under, just about three PR. Ernst played a little, played about closer to six. Yeah. But uh, it was a fun match, an interesting match, but there was no, Justin had no chance. Oh. And he needed those points. Because Justin's only hope, his PR wasn't good enough this tur this tournament. His only hope to advance was with winning points. Yeah. And yeah. so he got one point that match. Yeah, we're running 13. 13. 14, 15, How can it be running when you're both sitting here? Yeah, it's not gonna be. Come on, tell the truth. You got a kid or something? Close to midnight here. Close to midnight. Okay. Yeah. But I think the final eight is pretty close to set. Yeah. The the closer you get to the end, the more set it is. The more set it is. Yeah. I don't think the Dirk Michi match will matter to Dirk or Michi as far as making the final eight. They're both a shoe in, but it matters to them for their ego. And they also, they both want to show what their PRs are at the end. Dirk, they well, both, they both sell books. Either, but it's, uh, it's a season. If you want to do that, you need to sit in front of the so Tara just gave some yeah, recommendation to uh, to uh, Bill, and I never saw a guy move so fast. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. Come on, come on in the camera. So what were you saying? We got funny lighting here. I, I think. With the, yeah, the we need sun. to lower those. Yeah, shades. thank you. Sun's getting down. All right. Us. So you're saying by about midnight we should know it's for probably sure. Probably midnight. It takes about somewhere around an hour and fifteen minutes. Around what do you have an i11 chip or what do you have in that computer? I have an i7 chip in my laptop. What do you have? Well, it's a I don't know. It's a it's like a desktop and a laptop. Really? It's, it's a, a big heavy piece of it's equipment. about a 15 pound yeah. laptop wow. that's about two or three inches thick. It, it stretches the term laptop. Yeah, yeah. But uh you know, for each round, which is 12 matches, it takes something on the order of an hour and 15 minutes to to run them at the enhanced settings. And then we have to take, you know, eight or 10 minutes to put them into the results into the table. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, it's somewhere around an hour and a half per, per, uh, mm -hmm. per round. And we're running 13 right now. Okay. So it'll be midnight local time or a little later before it's uh, uh i just got watching. news that the next match will start uh at uh at 7 p.m or 1900 uh some people use those funny military terms but 1900 and i always have to subtract 12 to get the number but that means in 20 minutes we're going to see uh michi and dirk 
<coughs> looking at the playing room, I don't see them right now, but they're probably still playing their previous matches somewhere. But I don't see, yeah, I see Dirk in the far back corner to the yeah. right. Yeah, I don't see Michi, but he could be off the screen. He's playing, right? He's sitting, he's playing match. He's playing the guy in the red jacket. That's not Michi. No, but you can see the Japanese oh, lady back there. She's oh. watching Michi. Play. Oh, yeah, that's to Kazuko. Kazuko, I didn't know Kazuko was in town yet. Very sweet lady. <laughs> All right, we have 20 minutes to kill. I'm not going to sit here and talk for 20 minutes. So I'm going to put this on mute, relax, refresh my uh, my beautiful face, and uh, put on some cologne, and uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, spray some Give it a, performance enhancing drugs on your yeah, No, no. I
It's up to you. Okay. We are back live in Istanbul for the final round uh, with a very, very exciting match to finish with. I'm sitting here with Bill Riles. Tara is, Mendocino is to my left, taking care of some of the technicalities of getting a stream properly. And we're going to watch Michi and Dirk. Without question, two of the best players in the world, uh, certainly both in the top 10. On the Giants list, I think Michi just fell from two to three because a fellow named Sanders snuck in there at number two. I'm not sure where Dirk is, but he's up there. I know he's in the top 10. I'm not sure where he's on the Giants list, but we know how he's great. He's unbelievable. He was the number two Giant at one point, took off to play some poker. Uh, they both write great books. Michi's written more. They're, Michi's books are more fun than Dirk's. But if you're a really stu real student of the game and you haven't read The Theory of Backgammon uh, by Dirk, you haven't really understood this game. It's the to a detail and to a level uh, that is beyond anything ever written, in my opinion. I I don't think I have any qualms well, about Dirk saying that. won the contender tournament a couple of years ago uh -huh. and played Mochi in the... In the, in the finals, yeah, and I know he was very disappointed. He said he had a really bad. His PRs were not as anywhere near what his normal is, and he was very uh, unhappy with that. You know, Dirk is a teacher for the Backgammon Learning Center for my group. He's a great teacher. One of my students uh, that uh, I worked with for a while then went to actually he went to Paul McGrill and he McGrill worked with us and for a year my student worked with Paul McGrill and he loved him and Paul McGrill passed away. And I switched him over to Dirk, and he's been with him ever since. And he helped David Stein's his name. He helped Dirk with the book, did a lot of the work on Dirk's book. And Dave is now a great, great player uh, as a result of Dirk's teaching and and in result of working on the book. And they become great friends, which is one of the real benefits of teaching. You really be, you really make great friends with your students. You really bond. I have bonded with. I don't know how many of my 400 students, but everywhere I go in the world, I've got a great friend somewhere. I just love it. Okay. We're waiting for this uh, match to start. You're waiting for the login. And Wilson will, or Hossein will send that to you shortly, and Tara will get us going. Oh, uh, want to get Bill in the picture? Okay. Tomorrow is Speed Gammon, and I'm going to play Speed Gammon, and it's not going to be streamed. We're going to take a break from the streaming and uh, until nine o'clock tomorrow night. Stream the sun crossing the sky rather than <laughs> uh -huh. stream you playing speed game. I think they should stream. I think that'll be the most entertaining. <laughs> See, watching these great players is not as entertaining as watching me. I, I promise you, it's more fun. Well, it's whether you want drama or, or comedy. Yeah. I came up with a new variation I call crap gammon, where you have to make the, you can't make the first best move. And ideally, you should in the first four moves, you have to make the second best move. And if you accidentally make the best move, which could happen to me, then you lose a point. Uh, and if you play for money, you, you lose a point. And then the other a wrinkle of that new game, and I haven't tried it that much yet, and I, it might not be good, but we'll, we'll see. But when you get to a non-contact contact bear off, you move your opponent's checkers for him. Can you imagine what could happen to some of the cube action if you, in a bear off, your opponent's going to make the moves for you. I think that's going to be kind of fun. So I got to work on that game. It's a new game, uh, and you got to try it out a few times. So we'll see that, see how it works. You know, Phil. Yeah. Let's see. The updates are through round twelve now. We're running round thirteen matches through the computer at the moment, but it's really starting to take some definition. Um, what Zadinic, Dagfin, Michi. Dirk, Mir, and uh, who's the sixth one? Man? Levi. 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 And then uh, on the PA is, uh, or PR is Mochi, and for the moment, Ali Bayar. But that PR race for the eighth spot, particularly, is really close. Okay. Ido, Ido is the real story here. He's the one that you probably haven't heard much about from Israel. He is one of my teachers, so I worked with him for a long time. He's an amazing player, but he timed out and he doesn't, he automatically lost a, a, a match where he was clearly going to win as he timed out and he timed out because of a computer glitch. So the committee made some decisions. I'm not familiar with exactly what the, what they were, except that he could not get qualify as a result of PR. He had to do it by wins and he's doing it. He came back and he's won enough points 
through points of wins. Well, he couldn't. He can get points for PR wins. Yeah, but he can't qualify based on cumulative average PR. Right. He couldn't be one of those he, two he players and win points. Yeah. On PR. He couldn't have been one of those two players that got in because of PR if right. he didn't make it in from points. And it looks like he's got a good shot. It is, it's not guaranteed. This last round, we don't know. Last couple of rounds weren't in there. But if Ito makes it, that's the story. That's the, the Cinderella story. Of, well, and of another the one that's right in the, on the cusp is this Ali Baden Bayar, or whatever, 25 year old Turkish uh, young man. And uh, he's right on the cusp. Yeah. So uh, we another see. one of these young men who's great. And when I met him and talked to him, he's just a sweet, nice guy. I just can't stand all these people being so nice. I mean, why do they have to be so much better than me in every way? Yeah, and it, it's interesting. The ones that are really on the cusp are what? Olsen, Bayar. Uh, oh, you mean Olsen's not in the top eight right now? Not right now. Oh, my God. Olsen, Bayar, Castellano. Did um, we just see Olsen play under under 2PR? Yeah, and that match isn't in yet, although that was okay. a very small number of decisions in that match. Yeah, but he also lost quick, the match, too, didn't he? He lost the match, too. Yeah, so, so, so it only gets uh, one point. Mark's probably going to have to, if he qualifies, it will probably be on PR rather than points. Uh -huh. So it's uh, he's right on the cusp. It could go either way. Yeah, he was one of my picks for a sure qualifier. I mean, I, I was convinced... We all know Mochi was making it. We all know Michi was making it. And we all know ZZ was making it. Mark was my next one that I was sure was going to be there. And Dirk, but, Dirk, of course. And two others that I was pretty confident of, and, and they looks like they're locks to get in, is Dagfin Snarheim and Thomas Muir. Yeah, and I and I I see now why I was wrong not to think of that because I didn't I don't know their games as well. And they they are yeah. good. All these people hiding in Europe and Asia, I don't understand. That they why they do that uh, they they just just staying out of the limelight because they're not in the United States. I guess that sounds uh, kind of I mean, egocentric, Dak doesn't it? At two seven four, and Mears at three five zero, oh, but he's got more points than he's tied with ZZ for the most uh -huh. number of points after twelve rounds. Oh, somebody asked me this question: Is anywhere we're going to see what the luck factor was? Do we care? <laughs> I hope not. By the way, I don't care. I can I, care less. About the Obviously, I, I don't know if they're going to make all of these analysis files public uh -huh. that we're doing. Uh, Kara says, yes, they will make them public. Yeah. yeah I, so Everybody so, wants to see them. So you can find them, right? Okay. You, you can, can find the look luck factor. But the only they're time, not in any of the tables. Yeah, the only time I look at the luck factor is if I uh, if I lose, I want an excuse. And then <laughs> I don't say anything unless my opponent had really great luck factor. But again, my theory is the better you play, the more luck you're going to have because the less bad jokers and anti-jokers is going to be there for you. Yeah. Well, another, a guy named um, Amirali, uh, it passed by right there. Amirali.
There it is. How about now, guys? Can you hear us? Well, there's a delay. It looks like I had it muted on mine. That's what it was. Okay, but we're not going to leave. Yeah, we'd be nice. But if we have something to talk about, oh, yeah. match related and tournament related. I'll tell you one thing I've learned. If I think I'm muted, I still better be careful. Because <laughs> sometimes when I think I'm muted, I'm not. And that only took me 70 years to learn because I didn't start talking until I was around seven. I'm catching up, though. I'm ca I was a late talker, my mom told me. But I'm catching up. Yes, the sound is back on. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> Yeah, but now they're not happy that they can hear us. So what were we talking about? There's a couple of players on the cusp. Well, we were talking about there's five people after 12 rounds that are kind of on the cusp of the eighth spot with regard to PR. Mochi pretty much has the seventh spot, which is the first PR spot locked. He did have to have a explosion or something not to get it. So there's five guys, and they are Ali baden Bayar. Uh, Mark Olson, uh, Oliver Squire, uh, Oliver Squire, Amarali, Tavacoli, and Giorgiano Castellanos. So all of those in the next, this There's round and the last two rounds might make that Because see, after Squire, it jumps 0.24 uh, to Justin. Now, so there's also a possibility of somebody else taking a spot away from the other six, isn't there? There's a slim potential. Really, Ito's that, up that high? He's yeah, the, Mochi, uh, see, Mochi is 13 and a half. He's the next one. Ito had 15. Okay, they're in position. Tara, or yeah. you got any? I'm just waiting for my message. Hussein's okay, standing Hussein's there. He's about to text to send it. it. All right, we're going to have Dirk and Michi, two of the all-time greats. Check your WhatsApp, please. Now make sure. Well, I'm supposed to stay on Wilson. Here we go. There it is. What's your number? Here it is. 599. Mm -hmm. 389. Hey, we're in business and they're starting. Okay, we okay. got Michi on top and uh, Dirk on the bottom. They've already played a few roles before we got on, but that's okay. And... Uh, I think both of these guys are a lock, but they still want to get their best PRs and they still want to have the best record they can to have more confidence going in. How do you not hit here? You could just make the... No, you have to hit. I think you have to you hit. You have to hit and come and out. Maybe come out. Yeah, I'm thinking you hit and come out. I don't see another good five other than it's stacking. A, uh, a, stacking is not great. No, It's a big play, but... Uh, yeah. There it is. Wow. Made our plate. Got to be wrong. I think you just keep going. 22 point. Yeah, Rory, Justin was just in here in some of the last couple, three rounds. He hasn't done that well. So he's he considers himself out of the running now. Yeah. We were talking about him helping, on, helping do my streaming starting tomorrow because I really like working with Justin. I love working with Bill, too, but... Bill's got a lot of other things to do, and Justin ha is happy to do some commentary with me, and I love having him around. There'll be some other players available, too, by the way, so we'll switch well, it up. Well, there's 16 that'll be out of this. Right? Yeah, but not, then, that, but not that many I want to stream with. Well, and then after the quarters, there'll be four more, right? So, Where's my hat? Oh, I left the hat downstairs. <laughs> you want to get it? 1222. Here, here's my key. <laughs> it's in the bag? Oh, uh, you'll see it. All right. Well, Great. Okay. So we're look at it. We we looked away. Yep. Now what do we got? Sixes? That's gonna be the oh, that's a nice roll. Hit and made the ace point, putting two in the air. If you like making the ace point, it's a nice roll. Well, are you that kind of guy? It's two in the air. I didn't know you were that kind of guy. I'm not a I'm I like not an ace point kind of guy. And especially with this anchor now, that ace point is is what I call a very impotent point. And the deuces do not help unstack the six. No, but they make the nine point. Which is probably what he's got to do. Just when you've prepared yourself for a small double shoot. Well, he didn't make the nine point. Doubles. He brought it all down. 
It's, and many gets hit. It's about the race. When you're up 40 pips in the race, you should be thinking about racing. There's a lesson there somewhere. Come out. Wow. It's a triple shot. You don't want to go to the two point. You give him the sure. triple shot. At least keep him busy out there so he's not making points inside. A lot of people are afraid to come out and give triple shots. But you know what? He's triple gonna, shots miss sometimes. He's going to hit. And you're going to come in and come out again. Another triple shot? Yes. When you're up enough in the race, you can afford to get hit two or three times and still win the race. <clears throat> There's no question you hit now and come across. That's it. Still come up. Keep racing. Up to the 22. He does. And, okay, you're making the nine got to make the nine. Sure, sure. you make the nine. Like the six is six and escape. You either make the nine redundantly or you slot your four. I guess you could make the nine and go to the, the, go to go the eight. eight. Yeah. There's several plays here. Okay. Did that. Made the nine go to the eight. <clears throat> Here's a five point. And not a great, <laughs> not a great roll. But I try not to think about it. Is it a great roll or not a great roll? What do you do? That's what you think about. Do you make the five point? I'm tempted. I think I might make the. Yep, he did. I like that play because guy doesn't roll a four. You got a hell of a game, and nothing else gives you a really Six, nice five, game and a dance. Is this a cube okay, I see this, before me? I'm thinking this is a cube. Yeah, he's only up uh, 30, 31, 33 pips in the race. Is it a take is the question. No. So Derek wins a point, one nothing. He draws first blood. Now, some of y'all that are analyzing the results, I'll interject here real quickly. Um, through 12, Olsen was out of the number eight spot. But we do know in round 13, uh, Mark played 1.05. So he uh, very possibly will move back into that number eight spot. I just come out with this five one, and he does. I just not because it's a pretty play, because everything else is worse. Lots of times, the best play isn't best because it's a good play. It's just not as bad as the others. That's what makes it the best. It's better than the alternatives is the only definition of what's the best player. Two points. I make one for sure. I make one for sure. I'm not sure I make two. Yep, you make two. Good call, Bill. We well, can... again, it just there wasn't, yeah. There wasn't two other good fives. Yeah. So. And we we're saying when I say good play, it's because if Mochi, I'm sorry, Michi or Dirk makes the play, it's probably right. <laughs> it's probably a very good bet. These two guys are two of the best in the world. I'm privileged to be watching them, much less doing the commentary. There's a hit and a dot cover, but you still have to hit. But where's the three? Oh, you clear, okay, because all other threes are uglier. And this is a hit back. You must hit here. Do you hit with the four or the two? Could make the nine, clean it up. I don't way. see that play. I don't see making the nine. I think you have to you hit a blot, you prime a pair, and you hit a blot. You just can't let him go. And he did hit it. He agreed with me. And is re rewarded with a lousy rewarded. return roll. So you come in on the four and you play six to three? Ugh. Or do you play big and play eight to four? Come in on the three and play eight to four. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I already know where around. I didn't see it. I saw the blue one, but not the one I'm searching oh. for. Not in your backpack, is No. It's somewhere. I'm sorry. We're looking for my I beat Mochi head. <laughs> I took a picture of it. I, I think, think Mochi took it. It could be. We <laughs> At lunch, he was making fun of me for wearing it. I had lunch with Mochi today. He didn't like I had an I beat Mochi head, but underneath it says that ping pong. I'm I just came all the way up here to take your picture with the hat and you don't even have it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want me to take my clothes off? That'll be a good picture. <laughs> I will not say my thing, what I found in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't wake up my, my, my girlfriend, did you? <laughs> okay, because I don't have one. Not here. Okay, let's get back to this match. We're watching a great match here. 
I mean, two great players. It's not a great match yet, but it's great, great pair up. Um, the high double holding game, the four or five, I don't call it a back game. It's a double holding game. And uh, the reason it's not a back game is it's because it doesn't have the timing and the threat potential of a back game. This also doesn't have the gammon, the number of gammon. You don't get gammon anywhere near as much on these high points. And that's why you're not seeing a cube yet. I think this six play is clear. Two. Yeah, you make the the six point into the two point. There's a there's an argument for staying out. No, there isn't an argument because you got to move the one in. I don't see any other play. You got it. Right. Six and two. Um, you make the three, and where's the five? I you might come out here. No, you guys, maybe I go to the ace. He comes out. I think he, because of that blot, you might come out. <clears throat> he has no race here. He just wants to maintain his structure. Is the reason he came out, even though he, you're not don't have now a chance to race. I'm playing the cube here. Um, he's, well, he's up enough pips in the race. Fifty-one pips up. Yeah. The question is, is it a take? That's the question. Not whether well, it was it a cube. It and is he a did take, take, according to Mister Kagayama, and he took it pretty fast. So it must be a take. Well, he's got. Uh, I'm not sure. Not his best number. He, he he can he can sustain it. But uh, he, now the reason that Michi was able to take that cube so fast, I'm not sure if there's anybody in the world or in the history of backgammon that has more reference positions than Michi, because that's his approach to the game. And before every tournament, he studies like 100 or 200 reference positions. He's got them all saved and, and categorized. And he's been doing this for years. Oh, and this proves why it was a take, but he duped his threes. You still have to hit. You have to hit and pray. Hit and come go down. To the, go to the 10. Hit and, yeah, have a double cover, and the prey worked, and now do you, yeah, now you recue. Back. You recue because there's, there's no gammons here with one checker back. You redouble and pass. Very good. Michi knew what he was doing. But what I'm saying is he has these, I've gone through this with him. He has more reference positions than anybody. What's a reference position? It's a position where you actually study, you memorize, you know the numbers. Not only know if it's a double and a take, you know your winning percentage and your gamma percentage. And he knows all that so that he can adjust for different match scores. And I don't think too many other people have the that uh, much you knowledge. Know, and if you have a plethora of reference positions like that, then you can make minor refinements just by taking a reference reference position and moving mm -hmm. a checker one pip for yeah. this, that, and the other. Uh, gives you a basis for expanding that knowledge. Now, part of the reason I know this, I've spent a lot of time with Michi. We spent a lot of time together in New York, Vegas, other places. Uh, we, in Jamaica, we were down in Jamaica together. He's coming back to Jamaica in September to a great tournament that we're going to have at the end of September in Ocho Rios. And he and Akiko are coming. And I think Mochi's planning on being there with his family. That's the plug for the tournament. But the reason I know about these reference positions is I've seen him take really complicated positions with a snap. And, I, and I, how, how could you do this? He doesn't have to do any calculation. John O'Hagan would sit there and calculate wins, gammons, and adjust it and recube and do it. And he, they still come to the same conclusion, but John would do it by figuring it out. And Michi's already got it referenced. So that's there's two different, totally different styles and approaches to the game. They both work if they get you to the right decision. And you know, both and, and another do. thing I kind of differentiate and see if you agree. Contrasting styles, Michi and Mochi is an example. Michi plays relatively quickly. I mean, he'll be deliberate when he needs to be delivered, yeah, yeah. but he saves some time. Yeah. Where um, you know, Mochi tends to to burn his time early and has to play fast at the end, and he's certainly capable yeah. of doing so, and has proven it. Bill, I hear I times. hear everything you're saying. I'm going to ignore you. Uh, let's look at the match. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I just wait. We was waiting for that line. To, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we missed the cube actually while we were talking while we were talking, but I do that too. All right, we always split when your opponent makes the five point in the opening roll or the four point or the three point. You always split because there's two checkers on the eight and it freezes those checkers. I don't think I've had a chance to talk about that this whole tournament yet. It's, I'm sure it's come up, but I, I missed the conversation about it. So one of our big questions everybody has, when do you split and when do you slot? When do you not split? And a real good rule of thumb on that second roll. If the eight point is stripped, do you split? 
The only exception is when he rolls a 6-2, a 6-4 rather, makes the two point, then you don't split. That's the only exception. You want to not okay. give him four, ammunition four here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is not a pretty roll, but you do the best you can with it by bringing a checker down. And you hope he doesn't roll a six. Well, and if he does roll a six, yeah. he has to give up the anchor to hit That's you. right. Well, you had no other play. It's like Yogi Berra said, one of my heroes, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <clears throat> well, you have a nice racing lead uh, for D for Dirk, but with those two checkers back, that's not really necessarily a race yet. I guess you play 13 eight here. The eight, yeah. Don't you? What, what else do you do here? You're not coming out to the bar. <clears throat> you're not going to break your anchors and you're, you're playing. And the, Nietzsche may have a less than constructive role on the next roll. He could have some great ones, but I, there's there's some... Uh, what else is there besides 13-8 here, guys? What am I missing? Besides brains, what am I missing? <clears throat> Don't answer that question when I ask it. <coughs> you have to go to the two-point here? Yeah, and 6-5. You, you have to, yeah. Do you hit here? That's the question. He's up in well, the race. He's up in the race. I guess you don't I, I hit because you're up in the race. Right. Yeah, that's this is the importance about thinking about the game plan point. and knowing the pip count. You could make the two point. I think that's kind of ugly. Ooh, well, look how it. fast he made that play, and I wasn't sure. I didn't like making the two point, but I hadn't gotten there yet. Where he he got there very quickly. Looks kind of scary, but I guess you have to. You're winning the race, you race. Now he can just bring a checker in all the way. Bring That's a three. Well, yeah, what else can you do? Hmm. Hmm. That's right. Yeah, not exactly the idea of Mochi had in mind. I think it may be or double. Beachy, I sorry. think it may be double pass after any play. That's the that's the point. You now you're asking yourself, how do I take this cube? That's how I'm thinking. If I'm if I'm uh, Michi, how do I take this cube? And then with a smile, <laughs> with gusto. But what play will you take this cube? Uh huh. That's not it. That might stop it from doubling by making him too good. <laughs> that's my kind of play. I make him too good to double, so he won't double. I fool him. I'll show him. Now he's got a problem. It could be too good to double. How clever was that? If you're dropping after every play, it doesn't matter. But if you make him too good to double, that's the problem, too. He took. And? He took. And I'm thinking it might be too good to double, and he takes. Wow. This one he could, took that cube. This one could leave a mark. Oh, my goodness. Five away, five away. The gammon value is 0.655 after you take. Take point was 20% for a live cube. He had that, but the gammons, oh, my God. I got to look at that cube. Guys, on the stream, is anybody else with me? Am I nuts? Is that a take? Holy cow. Does Michi write it? And he took it pretty quick. He knew when he made the play he was taking. Any comments about that? Well, Roy said, and I'm, I assume he's talking about that play. Easy take, maybe no double. Wow. I'm way off on that one. Wonder why. Double shot. If you don't hit the shot, he's still got good structure. I just don't see it. It's looking like I was right. This is not, not we're, we're, this is not shaping up really good for Michi. I got to look at that. Okay, so five eight, away, five eight, away six, cube. Four. Five away, five away cube. I got to look at that one. Wow. I say wow. It's not the first time I've been shocked and wrong. Several of them saying take, and then Martin Howe take by three eighty five. 
Wow. I just didn't see it. He grabbed it quickly, so it must be. I got to figure out why that was a tick. I thought there were too many gamuts. But looks like I'm wrong. There's no way to get gamut here, is there? Casper says he had an anchor and a four, five, six home board. Leaving certainly, a certainly assets, but does it outweigh all of the? Uh, Obviously, it does. I mean, the numbers don't lie. He says it's a, that big a take. It's that big a take. I think I take two off here. You want that gammon? You take two off. In the old days, it was wrong. It was called double jeopardy to make this play. Uh, McGrill called it double jeopardy, but it's right, according to the computer, most of the time. You only leave a shot with 6-5, and if you take one off, you only get one checker off, and you leave a shot with 6-1 and 5-1. But he took that risk, and now, again, you can leave a shot with 6-1 and 5-1. So it was double jeopardy, but it's worth it to get the checkers off. But people didn't do it because double jeopardy just sounds so nice. It sounds, <laughs> got you know, just sounds like a good expression. So why would you do it? So does double tiger sounds nice too. And I see people doing that way too much too. Now, do you peel? No. No. I was thinking, tempted to go three off and one over. But you're well, getting. It's really tight if you yeah. to save anyway. Yeah, and you're getting one only one more checker off that way, and you're still leaving the risk of the shots. Looks like it's savable. Looks savable. Sorry? It's possibly to be saved and if he rolls doublesable. <laughs> He's got to roll doubles. No way. It's just... Nope. How could he take that cube? Because it was right and I was wrong. Okay, so here we are. Five away. Yep, one away. Five away. So gammons do matter. Oh, sorry. Gammons don't matter much. Right. They don't matter much because all he does is eliminate the free drop. So gammons don't matter much. And again, I want to think about these things before the start of every game. And if you do it then, by the way, your clock is not running. I mean, a live board, you can take your time before you do that opening roll. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any governing over how long it takes you to make that opening roll. I guess if you did it too much, they'll call the director, but there's no, I don't, I've never seen a rule about a, that. It's going to hit and uh, something else. Oh, here we go. It's going to come in and hit back. Hit back. <clears throat> hit back. So you play this like DMP. <clears throat> the good news is that Dirk is not afraid to play a back game because he doesn't have to worry about gammons. <laughs> Martin Hill says it's not gammon go, it's backgammon go. <laughs> ah, backgammon go. That's right. Backgammon. Three Reaching points. Within uh, two. Yeah, three points would help. Some people forget that, by the way. They stay back and they stay back, they stay back, saying, I don't care about gammons, and boop, they get backgammon. I've only been backgammon for the match maybe a dozen times lately. Lately. This week. This week. This week, my record's pretty good. I've been busy talking instead of playing. All right, slot your four point. Stay back. And you're rewarded. There's no way to play this without a shot. So you hit off the ace to get rid of him? No? No, I make that play. <clears throat> well, and you're hoping he has to give up the five to hit you, but he hits you with the trailer, so but well, not he gave that, it up anyway. Not only that, you dupe the four. Four to hit and four to cover. Duplication is something that really... Makes sense a lot. You see, a lot of plays are swung by the duplication. Hit and cover? Yep. Make the two? Come on, make the two. Something to be he set does. for two in the air. Sure. Double ones, you... Make the five. That, and then I also... Then I remake the six. <laughs> <laughs> Is he thinking about lifting? I'm not sure. He did, in effect. I think he'd make the six again. Remake the six. Yeah, see, if gammons were important, he might not make play this way. He might have he might have gone to make, to make sure of the closeout, take that risk. 
That's a real factor yeah. in these games. <laughs> and speaking of backgammon go. There are a few. Uh, when five freak, checkers on the bar. Uh, yeah. Freak backgammon floating uh, around out there. I don't, particularly even, I don't call it a freak when you got five checkers hit. And he remakes a six. This is, of course, beautifully Perfect played by Michi. Michi just played this like a piano, like like a symphony. Couldn't have looked Look out better. Out. Look at this. Look at this. Wouldn't a backgammon be something? Take one off. No. Nope. I guess he wants to get the gammon for sure, too. But the gammon doesn't matter that much. He so much to make for sure that. Win. No more backgammon. He didn't play for the backgammon. He just played for the gammon and the win. As, as we said, the gammon wasn't worth much. I would have been greedy. I would have been playing more for the backgammon on one of those plays there. Okay. Okay. Post Crawford three away. See, that winning two points just doesn't matter that much. He still has to win two more games unless he wins a gammon, whether he had won one point or two points. So that's why we're saying the gammon was not a big deal. And your opponent would have a free drop uh, if you only won one point. So that's worth about two and a half percent. That's interesting that he didn't anchor there with the three. He's playing for the... Well, that's because he's playing gammon go. Why is the cube in the center? Oh, because he doesn't have a free drop. Okay. He's playing games with him. Yeah, sure. You're going to play games with Dick Scheman and get him to miss the cube. I guess as long as you don't have a market loser, you can hold on to the cube. But it's a dangerous play to make unless you're uh, as good a player as Michi. The first time Michi might lose his market, he's got to turn that cube just to save his PR. Now he doubles. Because it, it hit in the dance here. I still don't think you lose your market, but just to be safe, do it. Comes out. No hit, but you make the anchor. I think anchor. you have to make the anchor here. You have to make the 20, you do. Come to the 8. Yep, safe. Better safe than sorry. Slotting. This plays itself five down and over to the three point. What else is there? What else is there? That's it. Huh. I guess you make the five and do you leave a loan checker on the. Uh, I'm tempted to make the team? loan. Man, yeah. I would have thought long and hard about leaving the loan checker. Well, the race is not of range. That's why it's wrong. True. If the race, see, as a matter of fact, look at the race now. So if you're way out of range in the race, you might leave that checker on the midpoint as an irritator. But you're not going to get hit there unless uh, he wants to. So that double four really helped the race. It's a little hard to bring home from here. He may have to volunteer a single shot. <clears throat> in that case, he's around a 70% favorite if he's gin in the race. Oh, my uh -oh. God. Did I say gin in the race? It looks like uh, there is no such thing. To me. Yeah, there is no such thing as gin in the race. <laughs> yeah, 81-81 with, with Michi on roll, but very hard to clear. That's why I think you keep the midpoint. You do. He's right. Because he's really going to cause him to crash and waste or not clear. This is not a fun roll, but I think you just bring in, you know, you, I think you bring them both in. You have to. Uh, the race is really close. What do you do here? If you break your board and you wait and get the shot, it's not going to be that good. I don't think I give up the pips. I, I think you, I think you, you race. Gotta break. You, you're breaking anyway, but yes, this is the, this is my play. That hurts. Well, every roll hurts somebody. Every roll makes somebody unhappy or happy. <clears throat> and Dirk is about to bring this home. And Ooh, three sets of six, six, seven, who four, won the PR is the question in this game. Who do you vote? Who do you bet on? Dirk or Michi? 
I'm betting on Dirk this time. Okay. I know Michi's the favorite. I think Dirk. Uh... Before the match, Michi's going to be a favorite in PR, but not by much. I think it's close. Very close. But in this match, I'm betting on I'm betting on Dirk. <clears throat> what is he looking at? You take the two off and figure out the one, it's got to be two to one, isn't it? What else is there? That's it. This match is not. Oh, there it Curtains. is. There it is. All right. Let's see if I'm right about the PR for Dirk. Could be way off. We'll never know until now. Ah, look at that. I called it. And yeah. by the way, neither one of them are thrilled with their PRs. M Michi, I know, is very disappointed. When Michi plays at four, that's a disaster for him. And uh, Dirk picking up two points. So he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's gold. He's, he's worth gold. And Dirk playing at three is fine. Michi was already got locked pretty much. So uh, that's the 16th round. And it'll probably be close to midnight local time before. Yeah, which is the normal time. Of the rounds That's are. normal time for my for my friends in uh, the United States. So yeah, keep, so keep an eye on the postings. I'm going to go downstairs here in a second. The 13th round will probably be finished along about now or very okay. quickly. And uh, so it'll be around midnight, but it's, it's getting pretty close to, uh, I mean, with each succeeding round, it gets a little bit more concrete yeah. as to who's yeah. going to uh, advance. And I think these two guys are both going. Yeah, they're a lock. They're a lock. But it'd be interesting to see the final total PRs and where they're at and how they compare with other and then UBC how events. That, uh, how the seedings work out as yeah. a result of that. Yeah, we'll know, we'll know that be tomorrow in the afternoon. It'll be posted. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow night at 9 o'clock uh, Istanbul time. Uh, you know, I'm in front of the camera, so I get seen a lot and people see me a lot. But the real thanks got to go out to Mark Olson and the team, uh, the entire team. And I named them earlier. Uh, and of course, in addition to the, the Galaxy team, you've got the three of us, Tara and Bill and I. And uh, we re really want to, I really want to give them credit. We had one glitch where, uh, and it wasn't the team's fault. It was my fault that we got knocked off at the end of Justin's match. But otherwise, I think the stream has gone very well. The whole tournament, if you were downstairs in the playing room, it's been very smooth. Everything has gone very, very well. And even the one difficult problem that they had with a with a timeout was resolved in a beautiful way where I think there's no hard feelings and everybody agrees it was fair. And I give a lot of credit to Mate for that. And I give a tremendous amount of credit to Mark for letting Mate take the lead and run it. Mark has really and, and stayed out of it. Mark, you know, he played. He, yeah. he wanted to play and he wanted to eliminate any distractions and he handed it over to Mate. You, you hire people that you trust and you let them go. And I remember a couple of times, Matt, I said to Mate, do you, do you want to talk to Mark about it? He said, no. He, and Matt, and Marcus wanted, made it very clear, you make the decisions. And of course, Mate is the kind of guy he He's not afraid to make a decision, but he, he got my input. I'm sure he got yours and other people along the way. And uh, everybody's happy with the way this tournament has been run. It's really exciting. Okay, it's going to get more exciting. For those of you who may have been late or don't, don't know the information, we're down to eight players starting tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Two players are going to play each other four matches. The first one to get five points with a combination of a win, a point for a win, and a point for the PR moves forward to the final four. Then we'll get down to two, and those finals will, finalists will play on uh, Friday. And then the winner of that will be our UBC contender champion, who will play Sander Lyloff in Copenhagen, uh, I think, in December. We haven't, I don't think they have the exact date set. And uh, we'll have a new champion or the same champion. It'll either, it'll either be Sander or somebody. And uh, we all know that Mochi's the favorite to get there, but anything can happen. We're seeing a lot of great play here. And Mochi, by points, it didn't come close in this one. Uh, uh, because he didn't have enough wins. His PR is certainly great. Any, okay. Anything to add, Bill? No, uh, just follow the Facebook posts of uh, that game in Galaxy, and these results will yeah. be updated uh, as we finish them. Yeah, and I I will give you my PayPal account later for anybody who wants to make donations. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. And thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. And good night, everybody. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye. So I'm going to get out of here.